Florspark can be an unpredictable city. Affluency doesn't mitigate its problems. In some ways, it amplifies them. This is why we're deployed. But we've seen better days. Just now debriefing. This mission is not complete. I only know of her. <laughs> Our lack of data collection is a problem. Valdez, I'm aware of your investigative talents. Braxwell spoke highly of you, and that's why you're on this team. Local law enforcement handles itself very well. But there are those with abilities. Some believe themselves to be good. Others don't even attempt to act as if they are. Either way, we're involved. Not everyone will agree with our status. But that can be said for anything. May I remind you both. We're Alpha Core. And failure is not what we do. there we are what's up what's up everybody hope you're all uh doing well on a fuck what's today sunday i think it's sunday uh sunday, it's sunday. night a uh, day is kind of running together it's been a very busy week for uh for us here um at the riververse but of course we are here live uh to celebrate the fact that we hit and i'll go ahead and pull this up right out the gate uh a million dollars in uh total sales we hit that last night, so big shout out to all the supporters, all the customers. You guys are uh, crazy. The stonks continue to rise as we are actually at a million and ten. Uh, so shout out to each and every single one of you. We we appreciate the hell out of you. Uh, we'll be closing in on that ten thousand mark at total purchases, and we still have uh, starting tomorrow. Will be twenty days left. Uh, excuse me, twenty days, two months. Excuse me, left in the campaign. Next month, we will start fulfillment early next month. So that's right around the corner there. You guys are going to start getting your books. Can't wait to see your reviews and all of that good stuff. So first and foremost, thanks to you all for uh, putting us in this position, you know, really legitimizing the, the company, a second property within the Riververse. Uh, it certainly means a lot to us, and we appreciate the hell out of you. But today, we're joined by, like, everybody. Well, not everybody, but we got a lot of folks here. Let me do uh where am i at that right there we got a lot of folks so i'm just gonna go around the table and kind of ask people how they're doing because they take some time out of their day technically a few of these guys are supposed to not be working but yeah here here they are uh streaming with me uh so we'll start with my man's uh andrew how you doing bro hey brother i am doing fantastic i am so blessed to be here one milli three in a row baby this, this uh, yeah, is just the beginning that. Just the beginning. That. That's true. Three. That's three in a row, uh, back to back to back in terms of million dollar campaign. So that's that's it's a huge feat. That's not supposed to happen. That's not normal. That's not average. It's not what well, won't even be our average. That just really goes to speak to you guys' enthusiasm. So uh, that's a good point, man. That's that's kind of 
crazy to conceptualize. And again, we still have a lot, a lot of time uh, to go. And by the way, guys, the numbers that you guys see as well, you know, that doesn't consider like store items as well. We do during the campaign, we do sell a store, every item that's in the store, shirts, posters, everything else that's not considered in that number. So definitely when you start to get new guys that come around, new purchasers, we really do uh, see those guys pick up those items as well. They're, they're just not considered as part of the uh, a part of the tally, only the stuff that's part of the actual campaign is part of that tally as well. So there's always a bunch of stuff that you're going to be able to get, even if you are new. Uh, so go take a look at that, that store. You can catch up on back issues and all sorts of stuff. We always will have them here, uh, at Riververse, but I appreciate Andrew again, not supposed to be working, taking time out of, uh, his day to stream with us, uh, today. Nowhere I'd rather be. <laughs> I appreciate you, man. And we also are joined by someone that probably shouldn't be working because she works incredibly hard and that's, uh, Carol. Uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. I just want to let you know that failing this hard is is traumatic. I might need therapy, um, but you know I'm going to keep trucking through and, and continue to be part of this failure verse that we seem to be generating. So. Failure verse, I like that. <laughs> yes, uh, part of the failure verse we are. Uh, we are struggling as a company as we make another million dollars in less than two weeks. So uh, that's always uh, something something uh, crazy. But we also are joined by the lovely Saska sisters, who we did had on the channel not too long ago. Uh, ladies, how are you doing? We're doing really good. We've been excited about stuff you know about, boss. And yeah. that's it. Yeah. yeah. I can't talk too much about it, but I can say that my job usually uh, involves screaming. And this week it did. It definitely involves <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it, it's, it's so much that's happening right now just within the company. This week, um, we've been working on stuff. We obviously, once we hit that mark, we greenlit a bunch of projects. So, you know, we're constantly thinking ahead and, and everybody's putting their heads together on stuff. The Saskas are, we are as a team. It's just been, it's been absolutely uh, crazy. So I appreciate y'all joining us as we celebrate today, this million dollar mark. We also are joined by Kara, who has been streaming a lot as well as uh, as, but we'll start with Kara. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm great. I'm great. Uh, I brought some snacks. I'm ready to hang out and yeah. celebrate one million. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy to be here. And uh, while I have your guys' attention, if you guys have to do address updates on your order, please do that before tomorrow at noon because I'm going to be locking those in. <laughs> Whoa. <clears throat> you heard her. So by, do, do it by tomorrow by noon. Uh, otherwise you may be not, maybe you're going to be SOL. Uh, so yep. your orders uh, will just default to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me, re me reroute it to Andrew. If you do not know, but seriously, guys go update those addresses. If you need to, we got to get those locked in because again, we're only a couple of weeks away from, uh, starting with fulfillment, which that's right around the corner. So please listen to Kara. You help all of us out, uh, by not, uh, you know, well, Don't let's just stress say this. me out, please. Please. I was just about to mention that. Please do not stress her out. She works incredibly uh, hard, and we know that it was going to get an uptick of tickets going into fulfillment. So, you know, you can uh, make everybody's job a lot easier just by updating uh, your uh, addresses if you have moved or whatever it may be. Just make sure that those are locked in and ready. And, uh, again, I appreciate Andrew, uh, Carol and Kara, they work extremely hard. Again, they're not, they sh probably should not be here because, you know, everybody's working uh, right now on the weekend, the days that they're supposed to be off. So, um, I, but I do appreciate everything that they do for this company. They're extremely valuable. And of course, I am joined by my man's uh, ass. Well, I've been watching streaming literally all day because uh, he's been <laughs> streaming literally all day since the morning. Uh, our time uh he has been playing some valheim i've been watching him all day man so how you doing bro i know you it's late as fuck out there man i appreciate you taking some time to join us he's so good he's so i i i gotta say i don't want to bring the the energy down but i i take great exception to something that i saw in the chat somebody said it is as a paid chill now that is disgusting i'm an unpaid chill. <laughs> <laughs> can you I please get it? Paid can you yet. please get it correct? Yes. <laughs> uh, no, great to great to be here. Uh, I've, I've been so enthusiastic about about the Ripperverse and and to see it go from strength to strength. 
And people, I mean, one thing that a lot of us just take, I think taking for granted, what, don't realize, not only is this just a new company with new IP, new characters that, it, that is going out there, but we've had the, the main character that most of the attention has been around. And by most of the attention, word of mouth, because yeah. there's no mainstream press, because they, they, they're not interested in actual people that do things. Uh, they're more interested in what, you know, circle jerk they're in. And here we are on the third book coming out from the, the company with a completely different characters now. Moving away from Isom for the moment, dealing with this, then the book after Yaira, Hi yeah, Sisters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's going to be coming out. Less than two weeks, another million. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's just if this is failure, I never want to succeed. Well, I never want to see people succeed if yeah. this is failure. But it, it's it's so um, the energy, the enthusiasm, the excitement. It's palpable, and uh, it, it's wonderful to to have that feeling, to have that vibe. So, um, oh my goodness, I it, to say Andrew just said, you know, we're only just getting started uh, as the Ripperverse, and I I believe you because. This has got two months left to run, and I've got my eyes yeah. into winter now, you know? And, yeah. and uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I'm very, very excited for what you're going to do, man. Really am. Uh, I appreciate you. And by the way, guys, uh, as in our show, you know, Ribbon the Silverback, that will be back this coming week. Uh, you know, had some uh, NDA stuff I had to attend to this past week, uh, but we will be back this upcoming week. And uh, I don't even remember who who the fuck channel is it on this upcoming week. Because who's the yeah. last? It's going to be mine this week. On, we could yeah. call this uh, as in uh, ripping the seal back two point five. Right. <laughs> All right, that works. <laughs> that works. Uh, Can I just works. say somebody called as the silverback? The silverback. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> now we and got. And I a, think a that was. I like yes. that. I've got an emo. Massive prop. Yeah. Massive thank you. I've actually got an emo. Yeah, a silverback got, emo got, has been created. Emo, silverback emo. Uh, but nah, man. As it's so valuable, I obviously appreciate his um, you know, opinion, certainly on, on a lot of stuff, considering that his, his knowledge of, of just comic books from the perspective of a of a customer, you know, that's so that's so valuable. And obviously being able to call him a friend is is important to me as well, man. But you need that perspective because you know, it's not like we're selling to people that, you know, we, we have to convince, right, that that this is worth getting into. Like, why the hell should you go and buy this this book? So getting that perspective of, of customers is just so, so very valuable uh, and important. I love the last comment. I can't remember if it was uh, whose show. You know, we we fucking in the last couple of weeks, we've done a lot of shows. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember whose fuck show it was that we were on. But, you know, I love this perspective. Because I went to it, we were talking about, uh, I think we put, put a video out on Andrew because um, Az was like, well, if I could push, if he could push back on something, he preferred the more, uh, uh, the, the, the drop and in, 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 in wanting, making the uh, the reader want more uh, mm. kind of style and approach that we had with ISOM as, a, as opposed to it being like a, just a complete information dump uh there and it leaves the audience wanting more so you know again that that's the perspective that's the perspective of a buyer right that's something that they would care to care about so you got to have people like as uh keeping you know he knows this industry he knows his medium uh and it's so very very important to to have a guy um like that i see a bunch of 199s that we get rated by jeremy uh yeah he said he said i just I just see it yeah we did actually get rated by jeremy so shout out uh jeremy for that raid right there with the one i see at first it was being a lot flooded. of 199s yes a lot of one on nine first it was being flooded with uh with with silverback fucking uh <laughs> and now we're going into this this one on nine thing so shout out jeremy appreciate hey, hit, you so much hit that like button while you're uh, there thanks. yeah while you're yeah. here listen to carol please hit the like button that helps with algorithms and some weird shit uh, that we're always trying to figure out because nobody knows what the fuck this site's doing half the time so all y'all thumbs the video up. We appreciate y'all. Welcome everybody that came from that stream. We we're just talking about uh, Alpha Core Riververse celebrating the one million dollar um, uh, mark. We'll get into some of the super chats and all of that good stuff uh, as well. But it's funny because here we have we have guys obviously that have read the the actual book, right? Uh, that have gone through the script in some way, shape, or form. Saskas have. Uh, Andrew as Carol went through it with her with her edits uh as well and um I'm gonna ask again because 
I know Saskas, we talked about it, but you know, maybe you have another perspective that you like to give. We'll start with like Andrew kind of, what do you think people are going to take away from this book when they finally get it in their damn hands uh, going into uh, early December? That's a great question. And something that Chuck Dixon is so good at doing is setting up interesting dynamics between characters that all exist in the same space, right? Whether we're talking with his work with the Bat family, Birds of Prey, whoever else, he knows how to dial into the individuality of the yeah. characters that form a team. And that's incredibly important because what's the point of having a team that's just three of the same person, right? It It's important to have individuals because the individuals are who we ultimately connect with as readers and chuck did such an incredible job dialing in on the differences between brian and ingrid ingrid and braxwell oh, yeah, all yeah. the different permutations and then all the characters that surround them that are not necessarily part of that core trinity of the alpha core but the other characters that they interact with throughout the book and that's something that was really cool to me to see. And it wasn't unexpected because I grew up reading Chuck. I'm like you. Yeah, exactly. I grew up re reading Chuck's time, yeah. work, right? He yeah. was incredibly important to me growing up in comics. But yeah, man, like the differences between the characters and making sure that each one of them felt unique and each one got really cool moments to have in the spotlight. Like if you're if you're super hot on Ingrid, you're going to be really happy. Oh, yeah. If you're stoked to see more Braxwell, you're going to be really freaking happy. Same thing with Brian. So he did a wonderful job just balancing all of these different characters, the difference between them as individuals, and making sure each one of them got some time in the limelight. I like that. I like that, man. And I agree 100%. That's what one of his strengths. Um, and that's why he was perfect. We've seen him handle definitely with like detective comics and you know handling different characters within the the bat family uh, over the years you know you know that he knows what he's doing when it's mm -hmm. time to really write a fresh story with characters that are not the same right they're different they have different personalities and this is what chuck does does uh, a good job of so um i agree with that 100 percent. carol you got to you actually one of the first ones that got to actually see uh the script uh, for Alpha Core, what do you think once people start, you know, they get their get their uh, hands finally on the book? So what do you think they're going to kind of take away from it? Maybe what did you take from it? Uh, well, when you sent me the script and asked me to edit it, I had a moment in my chair where I was like, you want me to edit Chuck Dixon's script? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> but um, he's such a fantastic storyteller. He's got so much experience and he's not somebody who writes one thing and he's like, OK, that's good enough. I'll keep at that level. Um, he's he's always pushing himself and trying to explore new things. I don't know if you guys know either, but like Chuck also writes like you know Conan mm -hmm. stories as well. Yeah. They're really good. I got to nerd out with him um, about Conan for a little bit, but you know the it's a story. It's such a wow. Yeah. Are we Yours was bigger than Az's. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we got the same hair. We do. Yeah. I like how we're twinning. It's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Twinsies. We approve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there you> go. <laughs> oh my god oh, it's really man. good i think you guys are gonna like it it's a fantastic story great characters no lecturing no nothing if you came to be entertained you're gonna be entertained so that's that's the big takeaway but yeah that was that was my moment when you sent that to me i was like you want me to do what <laughs> hell yeah no nah, you uh, it's obviously you're doing a great job on that on that tip and having your eyes just was um that was, that was vital it's always been vital um andrew's helping out with a lot of that stuff as uh as well uh, so I, you know, Saskas, you guys, you, you, <laughs> I'm not gonna give it away. What's happening in in Yara One? I can't do that. Ah, uh, uh, that's <laughs> right. why I'm here. <laughs> You're not getting away with shit. I'm, I'm here. Right here. <laughs> what? What about Yara Two? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I can't. I, I cannot tell you guys what's uh what's happening in that. However, the Saskas. Are they because of um, you know they're also handling some of the Alpha Core. You know that um, there was a conflict in ISOM one that actually the conflict there was between Yara and Alpha Core, and we have to pick up <laughs> on that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to pick up on that. So you have a you have you guys have an interesting perspective because again you you have some characters that are inevitably going. You, you're going to have to 
handle as well because you're handling Yaira and you know everybody knows that there's a conflict there. Uh, but you guys, of course, have already read the story. So what what do you think people are going to take away from it? And also, again, with that experience and, hey, you're handling the Yaira book. He's handling Chuck Dixon is handling Alpha Core. Um, and so you get to pick up on that and their book, his book is obviously coming out first. So what was that experience like? And what do you think people are going to take away from it? Do you want to first? No, you go first. I think one of the coolest <laughs> things was, uh, that Chuck saw Brian Solari the same way that we did. And, uh, spoiler alert, we write him the same way. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it was awesome because we were like, oh my, it was, uh, Okay, I can't say that. But um, <laughs> uh, you all know that Yaira and Brian Solari have a history. And in ISOM 1, stuff happened. Yeah. And when accepts make big deals in town, usually uh, the, the Alpha Corps show up. Yeah. So there's a very good chance that that is going to be continued in Yaira. And uh, I think. Yaira is pretty much something that is going to be a problem for Alpha Core for quite a bit yeah. until that ever settles down, which isn't really her. That's not too bad. That's not too spoilery. <laughs> no, not at all. I think it's fair to say and assess. Uh, and if I'm giving something away, you can't. You you don't follow comics well enough. This is already kind of already <laughs> out there. Yeah. Yaira is going to push against uh, the Alpha Core because there is a law, and she has her own kind of rules. As you could see, there is a bit of a conflict over that. Sure. Something incredible in Chuck's book is you really get like the rules and the regulations and kind of like the parameters of this world because as Yaira, from Yaira's point of view, oh, F this guy, he's always in my face. Right. Uh, then you look at his world and it's not that easy. Like he's a very, all of them are very layered characters. Brian Solari, I would have to say is my favorite because I also love the idea that this is a super powered war hero. No. Now he's a cop. And like, he's so much more powerful than your average cop. And there are challenges within that. Yeah. And, you know, I, I always had a hard time relating to DC more than Marvel because like the Superman kind of guy, like I couldn't really relate to him. But even someone as powerful as Brian Solari, like he's a real human. He's not some alien from another planet. Right, and he right. has limitations. Yeah. Absolutely. Like all of them have limitations. They all have their strong suits and they have limitations. It's just so nice to see like not just three dimensional good guys, but three dimensional bad guys. Like. <laughs> There's the bad a, guys were my favorite. Yeah. yeah, I love the bad guys because they're also lovable in a messed up kind of way. But, you know, you kind of love to root for them, too. Right. No. Obviously, Chuck has to write lots and lots of bad guys. So to see him invent bad guys in uh, in Floor Spark and to show why Alpha Core has to exist with the dangers that happen regularly and what that looks like. It's so much fun. And the situations he picks are just so pitch perfect. Yeah, and the way that he lays something out, like the story, like yeah. panel by panel, it's like going to an orchestra and like just everything plays really nice and no one messes it up. It's just like, wow, is this what music's supposed to sound like? It's just, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and you bring up a great point uh, with the differentiation. I know Andrew uh, sort of brought this up as well between these uh, various characters and Brian having his own personality. And that's that's for sure a challenge, um, you know, yeah, we might be using these other characters in our own individual stories, right? With uh, Yaira as well as Isom. Uh, but it's at the end of the day, it's it's centered around those characters in Yaira and Isom. But Chuck is tackling like a full team, right? Uh, uh, of people. So to your point, there's all these threads within this story. And he does, despite it only being, well, I don't want to say only, it's the same page count as, as our books are with Isom and, and, and Yaira and everything else. But it's it, it, he does such a great job in making sure every character had their moments, um, yeah. you know, if, if that makes sense. And it doesn't feel like it's just one of the individual characters books like and again, how he does it. That just speaks to his level of expertise, how professional this man is uh, and and all of that. So 
you guys are going to love the book. The people that here that have read it are, are have thoroughly enjoyed it. And I can't wait for you guys to get get a, a hand on it. So now we got like Kara and uh, as who I want to ask some questions. Kara's rocking the the new merchandise. If you guys that off, not, girl. if you have Her not got is. it, you can, of course, get the Ingrid Valdez sweatshirt. I was actually wearing. Actually, no, I have it right here. Uh, as well, it is. Uh, you were such. A, it came out so well. This damn shirt came out so extremely well. Shout it out to Igor good. for that art. Yes. Shout, shout, out shout out Igor. Shout out Igor. As soon as I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, that, that's a hundred percent going on some merch because it was. It's such a cool design of her. It it just feels great. Uh, it it's not gonna just like uh, disappear the design when you wash it. Uh, in the in the because you know it's we we so care about soft. Clothes. Yeah, it is so it, soft. It, it, oh my it's such god! It's a good feeling sweatshirt. It actually came out a lot better than what I was was anticipating. Not just with the design, but in the overall, just feel. We really picked a good feel um, for the shirt. Uh, but yeah, so uh, what are you looking forward to, Kara? Aside from handling people's tickets uh, once they uh, start coming coming in uh, in a couple I of weeks. Actually, I think the one thing I'm really excited about is just seeing how excited the fans are. Like yeah, one of absolutely. my things I genuinely enjoy is whenever the fans write in and they're just like, Oh my gosh, I just want you to know, like, I love this part, this part, this part. Like, thank you guys. Like I'm here to support whatever you guys have coming up next. Like that just gives me all like the warm fuzzies inside whenever people do that. Like, yes, I wasn't like a part of any of the writing or anything like that, but I'm still part of the Ripperverse. Absolutely. And so An it's one part. of those, like, yeah, it, it gives us, it, it makes me very proud to be a part of the Ripperverse and excited for Alpha Core launching. And then of course we got Yaira. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited for Yaira. Um, so I just, that's my, my biggest thing is seeing the customers be so excited because we have a hell of a community. Absolutely. Like, <clears throat> holy crap. I will say yeah. like in my previous job, I dealt with some very entitled and um, passionate individuals. <laughs> passionate. I think that's the, the right word is passionate. Um, that were absolute dicks to me on a regular basis and i have not had that experience here at the rip reverse like it is i i do not wake up and dread my job like i don't i just don't so thank you guys for one being awesome customers and being super understanding for like whenever we're having our busy days especially during launch weeks like and for being very um very uh just very patient with us and understanding and kind and all your tickets like seriously that it i you make my job like worthwhile so That's you guys send great work. tickets by the way i had one they person do. yeah i had one person send a strongly worded ticket and then right afterwards sent another ticket saying you did not deserve that i'm very sorry but can you still help me <laughs> yes oh, yeah. yes our customers are awesome, man. Like you guys are understanding. And I think that, you know, you guys being able to see the people behind the scenes makes it a lot easier to to because you understand who you're working with. And, um, you know, I'm glad that, you know, you guys are very understanding. You're passionate, but you're very, very understanding. And that's why we pride ourselves in our transparency, because I think that lends itself to to that. You know, when you know what you're getting yourself into, you know what it is that uh, we have to bring to the table. It's very easy to approach that uh situation uh honestly and respectfully so big shout out to all of you guys for um you know yes there may be a hiccup on an order or two but you know we get right to it and you guys are very understanding so uh shout out to each and every single one of you I, of course i have dad that have as i have to ask him because i know this was a book that he was really looking forward to uh he he, he had spoke about it. this was one that he had on his radar so mm -hmm. You haven't had a chance to read it yet. Uh, you're a customer just like everybody else uh, in, yes, in the chat. So I have to ask, like, what specifically are you looking? Oh, well, what, what was first of all, what was your favorite part of uh, of I something? Nah, uh, first, <laughs> no, first, we have to ask though. Uh, like, what, what what are you looking forward to with Alpha Core, uh, Chuck Dixon, and such? We still are rumored jokes. I was just about to say, <laughs> answering the question of what's my favorite part of Alpha Core <laughs> is going to be my my favorite part. Um, yeah, it's 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 
I, you put out a tweet or, or something about a week or so ago, and you were like, I don't, I don't care which character you like as long as you like a character. Yeah. As long as you gravitate towards something within my universe, I'm, I'm going to be happy. Uh, uh, and, and that's a really good philosophy, and it's the right philosophy uh, to have, because you can't control how other people think. Yeah. You yeah. know, you, you, could, you could put an item and be like, I want everyone to really love this guy. I want them to get behind this guy and be like, yeah. And then somebody go, oh, I like, I like David in tech support. Yeah, in the, in the comic, he was really good, and I'd like to. And he, 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 so you're like, what? But no, but what am I? No, no, no. Yeah, no. exactly. And and when I read Ice and One, which of course I didn't do, <laughs> but when I read Ice and One, and it just my favorite bit, and I, I stressed this at the time. Uh, yeah, that I, I never read it. <laughs> never don't seen. Know what, it. Don't know what that is. Never I'm told it, it doesn't never exist. It's kind of weird. That looks like a scam to me, <laughs> right there. That looks like a scam. That's CGI, folks. Don't believe what you're seeing. And and uh, even though I didn't read it, we got to we got to the point where it had the the Yaira Isom tussle, which was which is in itself interesting because Yaira wasn't even in what we've seen her in promotionally. Mm -hmm. You know, she was in you know she was in like sweats, like she'd just come from the gym. Uh, and then Alpha Core came in, and I was just immediately like, oh. Who's this trio? You know, I, I just really like the look of this trio. Uh, I, you know, I, I like team books. I've always been a big, like, Green Lantern core fan and, and, and stuff like that, and, and the various Green Lanterns which have come through. And even before I, I knew that Chuck was going to be writing this, because I didn't uh, until it was announced, obviously, uh, finding out that Chuck was then going to be writing this book and, and somebody who's been reading Chuck Dixon 30-plus years uh, but more importantly, it was when I first started reading comics, it was at just such a serendipitous time because it was just starting to go through Nightfall. Chuck was on his his absolute, you know, sort of like the beginning of his bat run. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and just the amount of characters that he had to juggle throughout Nightfall, Night Quest, Night's End, and going out into all the other uh, storylines, the Cataclysms and your, and, your, and your Contagions and all that legacy uh, as well. Uh, just the... And then... Particularly Robin, because I really loved his Robin comic. Um, when that came out, I, I, was, I was a big fan of Tim Drake as a Robin. Don't know where, what's happened to him in comics now. I think he left. Um, <laughs> He's certainly, not here. It's not there anymore, for sure. <laughs> yeah, there was and, uh, continuity, yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> yeah, just, just, the, just the little characters that were introduced in Robin to start with, the way, the way that they brought back uh, Spoiler and really fleshed out Spoiler and Stephanie mm -hmm. Brown. Uh, the way that he had uh, just brought his own little girlfriend in, Ariana, because he was dating a girl called Ariana to start with, uh, who was, uh, you know, kind of like coming from a humble background and, and all that kind of stuff. And just how he made every character, every single person that interacted have such a unique voice uh, and dealing with so many characters at the same time. Yeah. Uh, to, for that, to then go into a book like this, you just, I... I've never been uh, as we, we spoke. I mean, we've spoken mm -hmm. off off camera before this this whole thing began. And I said to you, I've got no doubt this is hitting seven figures. Yeah, no, no doubt because I, I know Chuck's work and I know the the quality of his work and and what he can produce. So for me, it it was a no brainer. It was just a matter of I want to get this book in my hands and I want to read this this book because I can guarantee every single character is going to have such a unique uh, voice. They're going to have unique stories. They're going to have unique ways of of dealing with things, reacting to things, responding to things. Mm -hmm. um, the way that he can uh, put conflict in, the way that he can resolve conflicts, uh, all of that. Chuck's just a master, yeah, an absolute master, and I don't know how he legitimately does it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So to have not just a, a group of people which superficially like, I like the look of that, I like the way they look, I like the bit makeup of the team, two dudes, one lass. Uh, I like the way that Braxwell looked different to to Brian, uh, you know, and then of course, uh, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. my brain's Ingrid. going dead. It's two o'clock in the morning. Uh, Ingrid. You know, Ingrid having the the sort of uh, tendrils, the whips uh, type type of business. It all looked uh, it all looked really really kind of like okay, there's there's something something here. You put Chuck Dixon into the mix, and it's just. This hasn't even been out for two weeks. This this campaign, one million, no. two months left to go. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, in Chuck Dixon, we trust. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's insane, man. And he's so good, man. He's just so fucking good. And I do believe folks like yourself, as and people that have 
read Chuck's work over the years. This is something that you're going to enjoy. You're going to thoroughly enjoy. It's he, he's still very much in his prime, uh, uh, Chuck, with, with the story it is that he wrote. And he's just kind of getting started with fleshing out a lot of these characters. He has a lot of ideas him and I are going to be uh, chatting about as well. And I just can't wait for you guys to get hold of the actual story. So also, I want to bring this up before I forget. Um, I'll bring this back up. But there was the final thing that was added to the to the campaign, mm, the, mm. the Riververse Studios T-shirt. That was what we promised you all once we hit the million dollar mark. That is now live. So if you guys want to go back to the store and grab that, you can. That is live in our store. The Riververse Studios is done in the art style of our actual animators. Uh, and it's our first official Riververse Studios thing you know, as far as shirt, merchandise, whatever you want to call it. Um, that you guys get to see so go grab that of course that will be shipping out with your items in the next uh, couple of weeks so go get that riververse studios t-shirt uh, we got a lot of options for you shirt options just go around and of course there's still ones that are in the store that maybe you guys uh, have not got around to yet that you can still get so but the reverse studios t-shirt is live go check that out and uh yeah where are we at right now I go back to it real quick we are at uh yes a uh, million eleven so appreciate all of you guys um, pin comment as well as in the description you can check that out and you can go pre-order the book if you have not already like i've said fulfillment is right around the corner okay before we get too far behind because holy shit there's 35 start comments uh wow. already here so yeah we're already <laughs> you guys rock in the chat thanks yeah. for being here guys shout out to all of y'all for hanging out with us there's a lot of uh content here that we have to go through and i'm sure there's some questions uh that we can all answer and have some fun with so again appreciate y'all helping us hit a, a million in sales man you guys are amazing i can't wait for you guys to get the book uh, but we'll start here. We got a couple of new members here. So welcome all of you, Sean. Thank you for Love becoming you, a new Sean. member. Welcome to Great Again. I don't know how many damn gifted subs this man has given, but uh, we got to be like well over 200, uh, I believe. Pigeon if you can consider, verse. Yeah, he's uh, with, uh, the pigeon uh, that Carol loves a lot. So Oracle the Great, appreciate you, man. 20 gifted subs. That uh, That's a lot, man. So welcome all the new members. I think that sends us well over 500 members uh total so uh thank you all we appreciate you paul um 16 months showing the emotes of the three members of alpha core my man's bruce with a 10 says 1 million alpha core feels great but how will 1.1 million feel <laughs> two more months to go uh let's go yeah it's right uh around the corner 1.1 that'll be another milestone that we'll be hitting soon enough definitely at this rate so thank you all for still putting in those pre-orders Bruce, shout out to you, man. Long time uh, supporter. Brent Wolf with a 50. Uh, that ain't cheap. Wow. No, doesn't even say anything. That's uh, pretty respectable that you did that, man. So thank you for that 50. Brent Wolf, no message. CJ with a 10 says, congratulations on the three-peat. You need one more three-peat to match uh, uh, Jordan Bull. So I got to, yeah, that's good. that'll be six rings right there. Uh, if we <laughs> three-peat uh, there, and we will be officially uh jordan but maybe we do them back to back to back to back to back we'll see we'll see uh jordan, now jordan is avery top. gonna get a taper fade and wear jordan's oh, no, i just start jumping off buildings and shit in uh slow-mo or two frames per second not quite sure if that's uh what we're going to be doing uh with uh avery uh we won't be giving him a, a tape taper fade and the jordan ones i don't think that's on the horizon uh, appreciate you, CJ. Eric Bailey also with a 50 says, my favorite part of Riververse is when the Shield Media said we are Christ <laughs> Gojira. Uh, says, uh, then I saw him cosplay uh, Eric turned to a silverback ass and said, smash them beaches. It was such a legendary moment. My wallet cried all the way to the Ripple store. <laughs> Hell, all. Uh, yes, that is such a memorable I really uh, feel that like, moment. I really do. Feel, yeah, I feel that. I cried. Well. The moment really I resonated cried. with me. Yeah, it, yeah. It, yeah, it resonated with me. It's such a special, special, special moment. Uh, there, Eric Bailey. Seriously though, fifty dollars is not cheap. We appreciate you there, uh, CJ. With a ten, I just read that. I just read that. Eric. Whoa, whoa, whoa! With another fifty. So that's a hundred total from a man's Eric. And says this amazing venture of creativity will go down in history as uh, the most profitable failure. <laughs> 
of all time. Everyone with eyes can see the passion you have for the Riververse and the fans, fans who are fans of you all, by the way. Keep going to the moon. Yeah, and look, we appreciate our fans. We know that there's assholes out there that, you know, because they they can't put chink in our armor, they try to then go out after our supporters, and they're all assholes for, of course, uh, doing that. But we know we have the best supporters. You guys are very enthusiastic about it. It's been interesting watching people try to, I don't know, gaslight people. Like, I remember, Andrew, we posted, what, two fucking videos, right? Full of fucking reviews, right? And these jackasses that insist, insist oh, uh, the, the, the readers, they're not even readers. The audience isn't even reading the book. I'm like, join our guild. Join our streams. Perhaps watch a video on YouTube. If you just type in, I saw one review or whatever. There's plenty of that stuff out there. But this is what this boils down to. They don't want to believe that this whole shit is real. That's just what this is. So they have to try to delegitimize it in some sort of way because they don't want to believe that we have such an enthusiastic bunch that is enthusiastic about comic books again. Right. Uh, this is something that the enemy and Andrew talk about this all the time. This is something that this industry has been missing. Right. A lot of it became a chore as you feel that. Hell, like you were mm. talking about this on stream the other day. Like it, it was more of a collectible at that point. It was like we were just getting it just to get it before we just said, fuck it. No more of yeah. these modern comics anymore. Right. So we've been there. So what we have here, though, is genuine enthusiasm from the customers. Right. So we're seeing the theories. We're seeing. uh People talk about, you know, what people can do and cannot do. And that's what comics used to be about. A lot of those conversations are are being had. We see it. And we, look, this is very much a word of mouth situation, as brought up earlier. Yeah, this is the three times in a row, right? This is the biggest, like a bitch and moan about it all the time. This is the fucking biggest story in independent comics. And I'm not saying it's just because it's us. I'm saying it's because if it wasn't us, we'd be like, holy shit, that's a massive story uh, uh, right there. But main, I don't know, mainstream, whatever you want to call them, the, the guys that cover comic books, they're not saying shit about us. It's all word of mouth, which yes. makes this even more of a special thing that something like this without that assistance or spotlight, per se, is still. I mean, people are just so stoked about it. Right. So that's our success a, invalidates every single bullshit criticism that they have said against fans for the last several years. Facts. What, what are they always saying? Oh, oh, fans don't want, you know, black original characters. That's why we got to tokenize everything. We freaking led the whole thing with Avery. <laughs> true. Right. True. Oh, oh, fans don't care about female characters. Yaira's the most hyped character so far in our universe. <laughs> what are you even talking about? So the that's what it is. They cannot yeah. stand the fact that our existence, our persistence, and our continued success invalidates every single thing that they've said. They're wrong. They know they're wrong. And they cannot handle it. But they, they, what they can't handle is the fact that it was never marketed that way. No. The Ripperverse is not successful because they're fucking black. No. It's successful because of the, the ideas, the passion, uh, the desire, the, the drive, and bringing back enthusiasm to actually comic book readers. That's what got people interested. It wasn't, I'm doing a political thing based off an identity. No, it was like, I'm going to create my own universe my own characters. I want my villains to be villains. I want everyone to have their unique voice. That's how it was targeted because that's what fandom used to be. Absolutely. Everything is, life is diverse. To say that it isn't is a, is a lie of, of what you see in front of you. You pick up a random movie from the 80s and watch that film. There's plenty of what would be classed today as diversity because it was just putting people in a film that worked. That's what it was. It was the same with comics. There were voices all over the place. Some voices succeeded. Some voices didn't succeed. That's just the nature of the beast. Yeah. You can't create something and expect it to succeed all the time. But when you then start to market it based off some something superficial, this wasn't a superficial movement and never was meant to be a superficial movement. A gap was seen in the marketplace and it was exploited. And, and that's what's making people really mad. You talk about the biggest name in, in, in comics. It isn't even close that it's the Ripperverse. Because the biggest name, and there's, there's no shade towards this person. I've got nothing against this person. But the one that they, they tout as the darling of the industry is Sean Gordon Murphy. And his Zorro book is not doing anywhere close to this. 
His plot holes book didn't do anywhere close to this, but he was the biggest thing. He's the biggest thing out there. And again, no shade towards him. No, no, but when yeah, an industry no. is so insular and all it does is create news for the media to report back to them because it's so incestuous, you don't get anything that goes out of that. And you've come out of that and you've created something that isn't politically minded. There was no ideological aspect behind it. You just put your thing out. So you succeeded against not just what they would class as, as something which has been intersectional, held back, put down. No, you, you succeeded without having to do any of the pandering stuff that they want. And word of mouth is the most important Absolutely. selling tool in any industry. Absolutely. 100% like that. And that's what's, what's care, of the, care of the company, right? It's been people just, you know, talking about it that have been enthusiastic. You don't get to this position, especially, you know, we talk about this is why we're here, right? It's three back to back to back. You know, like this is this is why we're that doesn't happen unless you are creating something that's compelling. Uh, and we're going to keep continuing to do that. And this, you know, I love that as brought this up because this, you know, this is the truth. If Saskia's Yara book comes through and it fucking blows all of our previous campaigns out the water, let's just say that shit became a five million dollar. Not ruling it out. I'm yeah, not ruling no, it can't. out. We can't release the Eric sketch. Yeah. And then, yeah, then I have to release that shitty sketch. Right. You have to. Yeah. You heard you it. You have to. If they pay the rent, you have to. You said five million. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So if it if if it's five million, and and it does better than than and uh like you know the ISOM campaigns, so the fuck what? Like this is the point. Like you're not you're not forced to have to like each and everything, right? It, we don't hold that standard to like even a Marvel or a DC, especially like when you know Spider Man sells more than fucking Punisher, right? Like it's just it just is what it is. People gravitate towards the characters that they enjoy. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're give, we're entertain. We're already kind of entertaining other other genres, right? This is more of a police procedure. It's a complete change of pace from what we've got from the more grounded uh, ISOM stuff. And yeah, I was a change of pace from Alpha Core, and right there's some other stories that we're we're coming up with. You got the introduction of a, like a blood roof in in ISOM, so we start to entertain some some a little horror here, a little a little um, uh, fantasy What'd you just here. Call me? Right. <laughs> Called you a little whore. <laughs> wow. Little horror. <laughs> uh, but no, we start to entertain all these different things. So for me, it's like, get off wherever you want to. Like, it's a train, reverse train. If this is more your speed, fine. If that's more your speed, great. Because to me, that's what building a universe is all is all about. But at the end of the day, that type of stuff uh, is able to exist and manifest into uh, from, you know, just being something that we conceptualize to making it be pen to pad to making it be a book and then putting it out and publishing it. The only way that that can happen is with the enthusiasm that we have been seeing uh, from our from our customers, man. So that's what this whole shit is about. So big shout out to y'all to, uh, you know, I think it was, yeah, it was Eric. It was yours that we were reading last. I appreciate you um so much but seeing enthusiasm for the fans man that's what this is all about uh garfield's bizarre adventure with a five says i would love to see the silverback as a fictional character in a riververse uh like on a movie post in a background well me and ass have talked about some stuff uh we have garfield's bizarre adventure i appreciate that uh we have uh river miles with a 199 we have east coast toasty boy with 14 months raiding i guess from from uh <laughs> jeremy stream as well Brass Monkey with a five gifted memberships. So shout out to all the new five, uh, the five new members. So shout out to y'all. Another Doug B. We see you all the time uh, with a 20. Says 199. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And again, big shout out to everybody. It came from Jeremy Stream. We got Head Case Laboratory with a five. Says saw the new Scott Pilgrim. It wasn't bad. Just hate the bait and switch. Also, when will we see the Silverback fight uh, <laughs> Alpha Core? Uh, hail the sisters. Have you heard about hey, that? Uh, uh, have you heard about that ass? Uh, the, the Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, yeah. He, they kill Scott Pilgrim in the first I, episode. Yeah, basically. I don't ha- mind it. I don't mind it. I don't so mind Kara, it. Kara's saying that she doesn't mind it. This is this, this is my point of contention, right? And I, and I mentioned this in my video, right? What they fucked up was is where a head case laboratory. Uh, where, where he what the point he, that he's mentioning. It's a it, it acts as a bait switch because it's like oh Scott Pilgrim takes off or what yeah he does literally take off I guess and yes. that 
not not like take off, but he takes off uh, like as in a backseat. That was I saw some big like Scott Pilgrim guys. They were fucking pissed. So it's less about the story in isolation, which whatever. But it was promote. This is why I don't get it. It, it was marketed in a way. That I, I will it, understand. Yeah, I, it was marketed in a completely different way that it was an adaptation. And they even said you can go to some of these interviews. They fucked that up. They, that was that was on them. They shouldn't have done that. And that's the part that I don't understand. If you wanted to tell a story, and even in isolation, if the story is okay, fine. If you wanted to make sense within your universe, fine. Probably calling it Scott Pilgrim Takes Off wasn't, well, again, technically right, but probably not in a way that everybody was going to say. It was, it was a bait and switch uh, in, in that regards. But I had to ask you, ass because I know we hadn't had a chance to talk about it. I talked about it on my, on my channel. Um, but yeah, there was some Scott. I saw some uh, one guy in particular I know personally, big Scott Pilgrim guy. He was fucking livid. He was a guy, he was like, This is this is bullshit. This wasn't what we signed up for. And it's like, again, bro, you can tell a different story. I'm okay with that. But man, context, it would be like equivalent to like me saying, All right, here's I saw um, graphic novel, and then like it becomes an Altona book, which Altona's great. People love Altona, you know, a lot, a lot of people love Altona, that's fine. But a lot of people got mad when uh, Darren was on that bullshit and I saw him too. Yeah, exactly. For that reason, <laughs> right? They love they love Altona, but probably don't call it, you know, I some I don't know, whatever. You know, if it has a subtitle because it's a graphic novel or something. And then it's not gonna become the next Isom. No. Oh shit. But it's a, uh, Eric, it's a mantle. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't get it. I don't I get it. Mantle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get mantle. <laughs> Isom's a mantle, bro. Well, I, NDA, 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 you guys yeah, no. the third one. It's just her. We're supposed to like end this arc and then it just becomes fucking fucking uh altona book oh man you want to talk about tanking tanking uh <laughs> that'd be complete sabotage uh if i did that but i feel you on that head case laboratory uh I, I ain't mad at you war machine with the gifted five says nothing let's just give the five thank you for all of you new members uh, uh for, thank you you more uh, war machine for giving those memberships up we have uh five from chungus actually dark ultra says what a five the hamsters and pigeons could be Riververse magazine mascots, just an idea. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I know Carol's a, a fan for sure. Pigeon, Pigeon verse. Pigeon <laughs> verse. Pigeon verse. Maybe. That could just be the name of the magazine. Mag the Pigeon verse. <laughs> Name of the magazine. Like the Batmite version, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah exactly what like messenger like. pigeons. Yeah. Maybe. Exactly. Maybe. Why am Maybe. I contributing to this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You give it up. <laughs> you, you have finally given in. Yeah. This makes me so happy. Thank you. <laughs> I did it just for you, Kara. Oh man. Um. Okay. Where am I at? We have uh Lord Botha with a oh well just became a member. I appreciate that. We got a two from uh Cerebrus. Cerebrus. Cerberus. 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 So God damn like it. the dog, the three-headed Sherbert. Dog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Probably should read better. Uh, Loki Otis and what a, a gifted five. I know a good book you can read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Loki, I appreciate that gifted five. Uh, Beetle Johnson, 25 months. Michael Copper. Can't wait to see him kick ass. You'll be seeing some Michael Copper very soon. Our man's uh, Gary's in the chat. Says uh, The Last of Us 2, Joel takes, <laughs> takes it literally. Joel in one. Oh, Joel, Joel in one. Joel in one. Yeah. Uh, fuck, dude. That's um. Yeah, that's that's reminiscent of a lot. I don't know. I don't understand the um, the entertainment approach of that. Like, because we've seen that. You know, yeah, Last of Us is what people are going to bring up. That's why they're kind of going to be sensitive to the whole Scott Pilgrim thing. What else? Uh, pull pull at the bait and switch. Oh, he man, that was notorious. Oh, uh, Master of the Universe, right? Yeah, yeah, um, horrific. Yeah, with the show with the T uh, came became Tila show, which again, no problem with the character, but it's like, what well, the there fuck? was quite a lot of Why problems you with it? Yeah, his yeah, version yeah, of the yeah, character in that, in that fucking show. There was a quite a lot of fucking issues with 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 uh, Tila, hundred percent. So, but no, it, it's uh, I don't understand that. Maybe, maybe socks because do you have ins some insight as to why? I don't know. Uh, Hollywood, especially, is doing this shit where it's like, hey, we're gonna get you in with this IP, and then we're gonna make it. 
be about, I don't know, this other character that maybe maybe you didn't ask for. Um, what What's the reasoning behind that? Is it just a straight up property issue? Like, what's the problem? Why are they doing this? Oh, I have a theory. And okay. it's been discussed in private, though not confirmed, though I think this is the truth. It's like what happened with Velma. Mm. They made the property so bad. Not just bad, but so bad. It's like people who aren't even Scooby-Doo fans are talking about how how upset they are bad mm. about what's happened, but they're all talking. And not just one bad choice, mm. so many bad choices. And they're intentionally farming rage because they know one of the cheapest forms of advertising is pissing people off. Yeah. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's intentional manipulation. And then Scooby-Doo, which who cared? really before they release the Scooby-Doo that's even remotely like the original. It makes more money than any Scooby-Doo has ever of all time. And that's mm. because they did it intentionally. They're like, let's do something crap. Because they do know what we want. They know they what you want. I've been in the meetings when they've decided to water down and ruin things. When they they're know. like, oh, we can't have Punisher killing people. I'm like, you guys want to do the Manucci story. It's better than singing and kissing fucking girls. He's the Punisher. If he could do that, it'd be done. Give the man a gun. What the yeah. fuck? It's fantasy <laughs> fulfillment. But yeah, I think it's intentional. And yeah. I also think that a lot of fake geeks and fake people who've liked our, uh, our cultures have gotten into gatekeeping positions. And they've let their friends in. And oh, yes. they have to erase what the characters' histories are because they don't know them. Yeah. yeah <laughs> they <have> no, <laughs> and they have no interest in learning because they're too busy kissing each other's asses to crack open like a comic book or look at old issues of something. Yeah, it's not about the movies. It's about filling, uh, fitting into whatever's going on in the trend right now. But it's so weird because... It ne I've never seen it work out. Like, I think a lot of people don't understand. They do a self insert instead of being like using life experience to put that into a character, which is what every writer does. Doesn't mean Spider Man has to be you. Yeah. It just mm. means, you know, a Spider Man like experience happened to you and you took it on the chin. Maybe Peter does something like that, right? Empathy's gotten really weird because we're only supposed to have empathy for people who look exactly the way we do. Yeah, we're not yeah, supposed to be able to look at, like, I can't look at Matt Murdock and think, oh, I really relate to him because they're like, well, you're not a blind man. And I'm like, well, hopefully never. But <laughs> yeah. that's a weird thing to I don't think we'll have gone wrong there. Yeah. Maybe because we're twins, it doesn't affect us because I've always seen someone who looks exactly like me. Right. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point. No, it's interesting, man. It's like, um, again, I think that is kind of what what makes us stick out as a, as a company and will just because, you know, we just promised to <laughs> not to do what they do. Uh, it's a very simple thing, um, but they are giving us the re a recipe for you want to talk about failure. That's what it is like. Um, it, it, a lot of this stuff is a layup. When I see people like fuck up characters that are just so beloved, like you have to go out of your way to do that. Yeah, you have to. It, 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 uh, Kotaku have already admitted, mainstream media have already admitted that they put out articles for hate bait. Mm -hmm. And and the reason they say they do that is because it's the only way that they can get interaction because it's all about clicks, all about hits, all about interaction. I think the Soskas are on to, to something there. I think it, I think, I think you've overplayed them a little bit though with their strategy because <laughs> what I, what I think they're trying to do is they are they they are putting something out which they know is going to be exceedingly controversial it's going to be exceedingly polarizing so they're going to get the people to speak about it they're going to get ever they're going to get the interaction they're going to get the hate click but i think they're actually thinking that that is going to drive people to see it to go oh my goodness me ba 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 and that sometimes works for a first episode but then you'll find the second episode will fall off a cliff yeah. because that that bit of, of of rage has been satiated. It's been out the system and it's gone. And then they're like, "Oh, why is it not continued? We've just had Robin in the Hood on <laughs> on on Canadashire TV and uh, Director X. Since I did my first video a year ago about it, has been trying to trying to get me to get on get him onto my show to discuss it." And I wouldn't, I wouldn't let him. I wouldn't let him because I was open to the possibility of discussion behind the scenes. 
if he wanted genuine feedback on the show uh, or a conversation, genuine conversation. But we were sorting that out between us. And then he went on TV and went, oh, yeah, they're all racist. They're all just racist. And it's just like, well, okay, that's a very strange way to start a conversation, isn't it now? The yeah. fuck is he by, mate? Because all he wanted to do was just drum up publicity. So he went on to Canadian TV. He drummed up some controversy. Look at all these hor- horrific white people, racist, blah, 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 blah. The next episode does a good rating because he's on the TV. And then the week after, plummets oh, off a cliff yeah. again. So I think they think it's going to develop more long-term viewership, but they're too short-sighted to understand it. It can't sustain itself. Yeah. There's a really good way of sustaining viewership. It's making something people want to watch. <laughs> oh, man. That, bro. Something so simple, right? <laughs> you could make a lot of money in Hollywood with that kind of thing. <laughs> You're going to get a big pushback. <laughs> I, I would be thrown out the window <laughs> but that's just because i'm white and male <laughs> wouldn't even be for your opinion no. because you're white oh. you know, yeah especially a male yeah yeah you're fucked dude that's yeah uh, that's happy pretty international weird. men's day by yeah. the way guys oh yeah it is it is happy, happy international, happy international men's day viewers yes shout out shout out shout out dudes um, Dudes don't get enough love. You're all handsome and beautiful and deserve flowers and chocolate. Yeah, I said to pet a dog today, even if it isn't yours. There you go. There you go. Um, where is my dog? I thought I, oh, she's in the, she's under the covers. Um, Aww. yeah, that's her, Cammy. Okay, where are we at? Uh Raleigh with a 10 says um Mia was timid. Uh though a laser except she never asserted herself. Uh, but then a blonde except just slammed a guy into a car. Uh, you knew it was time for a chain. Get ready for Kagayaki number one. I, I, I did. I was not aware that we that was uh, on the horizon. Now, now I am. That's something that you don't even know about. Yeah, I mean, shit. On. That's 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 Too many NDAs now. Yeah, now nah, now nah, NDAs gotten me. That's uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, wow. Uh, Dan Vasque in the chat. I see him. Uh, yeah. <laughs> when he said that whole handsome bit, he said, uh, some more handsome than others. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> says Dan Bass, shout out Dan. Uh, Amenti with a five says, I rip and the silverback. I love you guys. Hell, the fellowship and hell, the 199 as is my gateway drug to everyone else in the fellowship. Uh-huh. So, ain't nothing wrong with that, man. Ain't nothing wrong I'm with addictive that. as well. So, go yeah. for it. <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing, nothing wrong with that. Uh, hair case laboratory with a two on more document cards. Well, those are on the way that will be released with the Yaira. With the Yaira campaign, we have uh, uh, some more cards that she's holding right there. That box that you're not supposed to be opening, Andrew has it as well. You're not supposed to be opening that box. Um, but I'm <laughs> rebel without a cause, you ain't the boss. Of me. <laughs> well, okay, oh, you are actually the boss. Oh. Of me. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, oh, kitty, yep. I'm allergic to cat. Look at the cat. Look at it. The whole stream stops for the cat. It's the star now. This is why cats feel so entitled all the time. The world stops for them. (laughs) They believe that a world comes in here. Yeah. Um, It's a puppy. That's different. (laughs) But uh, yes, there will be some more cards that will be dropping uh, during the Yaira campaign. You'll get some of the characters from Yaira, uh, Alpha Core, as well as Isom, too. Those characters will have some cards. Uh, we're preparing those actually now. Me and Andrew was talking about some of those, uh, uh, some of that stuff today. So they will be uh, just be prepared for those. Same size. I'm also working, trying to see how realistic it will be to get you guys a um, a binder. We'll see. Uh, I'm working on that, but I, I'll keep you guys posted on that. So uh, just be ready. Uh, going to Jap- uh, Japan counterparts of each Ripperverse uh, hero. Interesting, says Raleigh. Japanese I song. Sick. Japanese I song. <laughs> and Zach with a two says one nine nine. I appreciate that. Eric Bailey with a ten says, now that there are more than two women in the Riververse, we need an all female revengers. They just need a straight, just need a straight w- white male uh, to be a mega baddie, preventing them from getting comfort food and shoes. We just need um, an eight foot misogynist. Oh yeah, that's what, yeah, that's what Captain Marvel told us. We just need an eight foot. Eight foot massage and is going in a pool. Oh my god! That book Can we so- have like a random scene in the possible one day movie that we may do, where all the women get together for no reason and then like badly strategically go towards the bad guy and a thing that could have taken five seconds? Sure. Yeah. How can we go for milkshakes? 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and sync, sync your period. So everyone's just syncing the periods. As yeah. Well. Yep. Yep. That, that, that's, uh, that's what the people want. That's what the people want. Sheep corrected. I said seven foot massage. That's all right. That's right. He was. Seven this is the Ripperverse. We don't do that. That odd numbered shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, wouldn't that be be something? But yeah, we have. Um, and I guess we could speak on that for a, a little bit because with, with the Saskas and what they've been able to do with uh, the characters that they've they've handled over the years. Um, and I think we spoke about it briefly a couple of days ago. You guys were on the stream about like how the modern era has just fucking failed the the female just character even if they're not like super he uh, heroines like just fucking characters in general um making them boring the mary sues all that stuff um and then you get something even interesting like you guys what you guys did with no restraints play and despite the reception uh they and i told y'all this in person so i'm not just saying this shit uh you know just to be saying it I was fucking pissed when they didn't get the ongoing series of Black Widow. You were Duh. pissed on stream. I was pissed on stream when like that way happened. back when that yeah, happened. Back in the gap, I was fucking angry because I was like, "What the fuck? This makes no sense." We have a perfect, you know, a, we have Black Widow going in the direction that she deserves. We have two individuals that know exactly what it is that they're doing and how to handle that character, and then they went. Uh, a different route let's just say that um but yeah either way i think we can agree for the most part especially with what's happening with the marvels right now uh there has been an absolute fucking failure uh to deliver just decent female heroes by the mainstream why do you guys think that the case is the case and are they even in a position do they possess the capacity to be able to fix that shit do you want to start you were born first. You can always go first. <laughs> well, I would, <laughs> I, I would say it's, have you ever heard the term overcorrection? Mm -hmm. These aren't people coming from an authentic place that are like, whoa, I love female characters. These are people that have made all the things that you're like, ah, why is this like this? And they're like, oh, fuck the audience. Okay, well, what do they like? Chicks? Okay, let's just put five chicks in this. Why don't they like it? Well, let's just call them sexist. That's that seems to be working quite well yeah. for us. That's been going on for a while. Um, I I don't think they like the source material. I think they uh they just wanna I don't know. They it's so funny because in the 90s, there's so many movies with badass chicks, like oh, yeah. uh The Long Kiss Goodnight. Mm -hmm. Like there is so there is no reason for anything. Like the the Tom Savini remake of Night of the Living Dead. And everybody would accept it. And it, and it wasn't like uh, she just magically was better than everybody. It's just like she got to do the cool shit that the dude characters did, too. And you're like, oh, fucking cool. But she would do like a cool chick thing. Like in Charlie's Angels, how they were like very aware of how fucking hot they were. And that was like the joke of it. And I think people are so afraid of that. I know Me Too was a big thing. Like if you look at Mortal Kombat, you remember uh, the best thing you could get was Molina's costume. And it was just bandages and it was fucking awesome. And I then, remember that. I worked very hard. <laughs> you worked very hard very to hard. get that. And that was the one where their clothes ripped job. away. So yeah. they were just like, and you you're like, oh, but you know, they're not going to animate that, but you think, it. and anyways, it was fun because you're an adult and you're playing a game and you, you know, you like anatomy. It's just like, you know, they chisel it out of, you know, it's art. And then all of a sudden, Me Too happened, and every you saw the next game, everybody had full body suits. Yeah. Everybody had every, and that's because Hollywood is a disgusting cesspool, and they're like, oh no, they know. <laughs> they're like, let's pretend no. You know, I, I I don't understand why they don't just uh, make movies about characters people like. Like when they made Batman, they're like, who's the bad guy? Who's the bad guy? Who's the bad guy? Oh, the Joker. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, Storm and Rogue. Two mm -hmm. incredibly popular characters. Uh, I think Storm is probably the most, you know, prominent black female superhero. Oh, Everyone yeah. loves Storm. Absolutely. Storm would work without the X-Men. Storm works leading the X-Men. Yep. She works fighting with the Morlocks and leading them. She's just an incredible car character. And when I really started to get into X-Men, uh, Rogue was freshly a terrorist. Yeah, she was. And I would say also on a side note, if, the Marvels ended with an X-Men thing, but you know, Miss Marvel was on a plane and she's like, Oh shit, I got, I'm a pilot. I better grab this. And then rogue grabbed her face and oh. power sucked her. Yeah. 
I would still be in the theater seeing that movie. You wouldn't even be able to get me. I'd be like, this is the rogue part, you guys. You guys yeah. can still do that scene. Put it back in. You need that $10 million or whatever. Oh, wait, I think it's a little more than you yeah, I would clip it and watch it when I need a dopamine fix. That's what I did. <laughs> but I believe it was Claremont when uh, Rogue was a terrorist, didn't want to be part of the X-Men, and uh, Storm, who hated her, actually yes. went after her to stop her, and then Forge had created a gun to take Rogue's powers away. But he shot Storm instead, and he mm -hmm. was in love with Storm. Like that story alone. And then the dire race showed up, and it became a These horror are aliens movie. from another planet. But yeah. they could look at you and they could drill into your brain, and then you would like dehydrate. Those were the stories I grew up. And just, just that alone, anything there, like everyone would love to see Rogue, other than, you know, she's hot. That's one of Rogue's many, many traits, but she's such a beautifully written character. Yeah. And also, if they really cared about like trans issues, why not Mystique? Yeah. Mystique is <laughs> the most gender fluid character yeah. there is. She's been in all of your X Men movies. So, like, give her a book if you really actually care about that stuff. They don't. They, it, no. No. they don't care and they do. They do, don't do these characters justice. And when they fail, it's then blaming the audience, right? And and that's the shit that I don't I don't really understand because we've not seen it work like at all. I I, I maybe I'm missing something, but I have not seen that shit works work when yeah, this thing people aren't being really receptive to it, and because they're not living up to our standard, what we feel is righteous, they're racist, they're sexist, they're, they're homophobic, they're all this other other goof goofy shit. Um, and they blame everybody that uh, they're trying to convince to buy the product. Very weird phenomena. Um, it's an odd strategy. We, yeah, it's um, it's illogical. Let's just say that um, we started. To, we saw that a lot in comics uh, as people utterly started rejecting. I don't know when did it start. As you would say, maybe the mid mid twenty tens. Yeah, maybe. mid twenty ten, about twenty fifth. Well, for DC because I was a DC guy. Yeah. Uh, I <laughs> there was actually a point where I was laughing. Going, <laughs> look what Marvel are doing. Yeah. Oh, thank God DC would never do that. <laughs> yeah. <Ooh>. yeah. <laughs> and they, they literally uh, did the same fucking thing. Hurts don't it as karma. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, how to how to how to turn tables, huh? How the how the turn tables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How the turntables, man. That yeah. that actually fucking happened. It's funny because what was um what was that event that they recently did? It was a couple of years ago. I know. Remember they were talking about it at the um at like DC fandom. It was basically it was basically all new, all different Marvel. Uh, five, oh, it was five uh, G, wasn't it? They're gonna do yeah, five G. No, but it was another one. They actually future state, oh, future state. That's oh what it god. Was. That's oh. what it fucking was. I'm sorry, As. I'm so, I'm sorry. I know we just met. I'm not trying to break the ice with trauma like that, but I was just providing information. It was Future State. It was fucking Future State, which was basically, it was all new, all different. Several fucking years after all new, all different. So that tells me, I don't know who the fuck they got over there measuring the market. That tells me they didn't learn jack shit. Well, well <laughs> Future State is actually the remnants of 5G. 5G. 5G, yeah, 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 yeah. That was still the the original concept. That's essentially what it is that we got. Uh, if you guys remember, in the mid mid twenty fifteens, it was we, uh, mid twenty tens. Marvel had this bright idea of saying, "We're just gonna take all the characters that you guys love and um change them, uh, and uh, we're gonna swap them, uh, and we're gonna really put a lot behind them." Very weird phenomena, and it didn't work. Has to be expected. And in a few years, not a few, it actually, that's what I don't understand. So they had a lot of time to think like, okay, and see that that shit didn't work. And then DC did the whole future state shit. And I was like, what the fuck, man? It didn't work then. Uh, you had the, what was the flash that had the fucking, uh, Oh, that oh, was like a freaking amputee. Oh. They had like the freaking, the blade. Oh my Jesus. Oh yeah. Tap dancing oh, no. Christ almighty. It that was, was so horrendous. And what's the saddest part about that, Eric? And as I mean, you're a DC guy too. The saddest part about that is this was like only two years removed from Rebirth, which had given them like a new renaissance. True, true. They true. were over Marvel in sales for like that first year. And that had been like the first time in their history. And they're oh. like, cool, look at this. Now we're going to throw it all away. 
Do you remember when they tried to correct the new 52 with Rebirth and it was really working? Really good. Too much. They, went, they were hitting this no, money they were firing thing. on all cylinders, bros. They were firing. DC during that window of time could not fucking miss. Basically, <laughs> every fucking main property that they had was a fucking hit. From, from Batman to fucking Detective Comics to... To uh, uh, uh Tinian's Detective Comics, oh, it's some Action of the Jurgens was back on Superman. Back on Superman. And everything was so Super Sons. So yeah, yeah. Super Sun, very popular. Everything was fucking good, and I don't know what happened. Maybe that I don't know if that'll be a point in history where we will go analyze that period of time because I don't know if I've ever fucking seen it where a company says, "Okay, we fucked up." Right, twenty. They realized New Fifty Two that was a fucking mistake. Okay, let's try to correct this shit, and they did. And they did, they did, they hit on all fucking cylinders. And then they just said, you know what? We're going to stop fucking doing that. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating. It's we're fucking We're going to turn off all cylinders. Yeah, now, now we're not, yeah, now we're fucking, fuck cylinders. Like, what the, I don't know, what the fuck? They blew it, they blew it up. Like, it, it, it was, it was like, like they sabotaged themselves. It's like someone said, stop giving people what they want. How about we give them what they despise? And then we start calling them fucking names when they reject this shit. How about we? Do, how about that? Who walked into the fucking office headquarters if they even had fucking one? And 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 that and that was the that, that's that was the conversation that was at. Hey guys, we know everything's working. Sales are starting to see an uptick. Everything's looking good. Uh, everybody's happy. Fuck doing that. Everybody stop right now. And I'm gonna get the worst person that I can fucking think of to get on these projects. We're gonna do something to fucking Tom King. I don't know what they did to him because he went from being pretty decent, right? Well, I, jokes you know, and yeah, I, I just want to, can I share this? I, I'm not saying this has got anything necessarily to do with it, but I just want to share this. Oh, sorry, we accidentally took over comics, everyone. Oh. Gail Simone and Kelly Sue DeConnick. You can go fuck yourself, ladies. <laughs> when she said, what was her famous quote? The uh, you don't like you my, don't politics. my politics, don't buy my book. So everyone went, Okay, <laughs> we <laughs> we accept your terms. No, I don't get it. It was interesting. We've never seen anything like that. I will never understand. And then, like I said, midst of all that, Sasuke's writing an incredible fucking book. Mm hmm. And I'm so fucking happy. I'm on the moon. I'm I'm reviewing this. I'm like, holy shit, man! Marvel's Marvel's uh, they they do what they did. They somehow snuck this story by. Stop. I don't know how the fuck they did it. Second story by standards and practices weren't on to us until issue two. Yeah, and yeah. then they were really, really, really on to us. It was but too it was late. Too late. They were but too was, pregnant. The setup was already out. It was already printed. People were already like, "Let's watch Nat kill some pedophiles." Yeah. 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 And it was phenomenal, it was Eric. Phenomenal. What would have happened with the Ripaverse if you had pitched it as "I only want and caps buying our books"? Oh fuck, it would have been dead, dead on arrival. And, yeah. and, and hell, it ain't enough for the, enough en enough of them to buy some shit, let alone fucking uh, maintain a fucking company. That's the worst fucking advice that you can give someone. Like, just say like, "Hey." You're frustrated because maybe there are some people that don't think like you politically. And you say, as you're writing some characters within this, again, one of the ma just a massive company, right? Publishing company, as far as uh, uh, comics are concerned. And you just basically tell everybody to go fuck themselves. Don't even don't even buy. And then and she was also talking about how people aren't making money in comics. It's like, yeah, woman, put two or two together. Like, <laughs> just how, how would you come out with that comment? And then a couple of years later, go back on camera and talk about how comic shops are closing down all over the place and the industry's in tatters. And he's like, did you look in the fucking mirror? Hey, did you well, ever take the time to do that? She was making that first comment. She was pouring gasoline on the shops and then throwing a match at it. Just pouring gasoline on herself. <laughs> <laughs> Very I true. Say, Excuse me, I just light this cigarette. What do you think was going to happen? Unbelievable. It, it it is remarkable, man. And um, like I said, if nothing else, because all of that, if you think about it, I mean, everything's come full circle out of that. Because really, that's how a lot of the cancellation shit. That was the same era, right? You saw Chuck Chuck getting blacklisted. Um, you you know, 
Joe Bennett. You know what happened to him on basically like the one book that <laughs> so many people felt was actually solid for them. What was the last time Hulk was selling like that? Right, right. Immortal Hulk was, that was their shit. And they told the fucking artist to, you know, because political hike. bullshit, take a hike, get the fuck out of here. Right. So it, it did kind of come full circle because now they're all here. <laughs> right. And uh, we're, we're uh, giving stories and we're promising to give you guys stories that um, that, uh, you know, you want. But for me, the, the reason why I do think I think about everything from an economic perspective, I'm a fucking nerd like that. That's just so I look at that and I analyze it. And, yeah, it's you want to learn from it. You don't want to do that. But it is something worth researching, because like what what even happened? What went so wrong that this was even a thing that these people thought to tell the people that basically pay for your shit to go fuck themselves in various ways, whether it be by way of calling them all sorts of names and, and, and all sorts of goofy shit or just downright disrespecting the characters it is that you're now having the responsibility uh, to write and you didn't create right these are characters that they didn't create like they they they, they they'll they be here after you passed they were here long before you were even thought about in a lot of cases and these people were treating the property with so much contempt and it's mm-hmm. just remarkable it was remarkable to see that shit play out and i don't i still don't really i don't quite understand why but you want to learn from it and you don't you you got to i don't know man you, you got to watch for shit like that because that's, that's why what we're doing here is so important because as you said you, you you pay super attention to the economics of it all. We're trying to solve a lot of the ex, the economic problems. Absolutely. You know, we're making sure that people are getting paid. Yes. Paid on time. Absolutely. Paid well. And then, like, in the case of when things also do extremely well, Chuck Dixon's getting a fast, fat bonus. Fat-ass bonus. Right? And that's deserved. That's earned. Mm-hmm. That's on merit. And that's something that we're contributing to in terms of fixing the economic problems. But we're also Damn. fixing a lot of the creative problems, I feel. And you had mentioned earlier when you were referencing back as his comment about he liked the, the more grounded, slower pacing, how you're getting to actually ease in. And there's actually build up and set up to everything, because one of the big problems, and I think you and I kind of stopped buying uh, mainstream comics at around the same time, is it seemed like all that ever mattered to them was what is the next big event? Mm, oh, yeah right you had war of the realms then you had absolute carnage and then whatever the hell they had after that dc was doing the same thing it seemed like a month after one big event ended they were already advertising what the next one was and half the time that's like a refresh or a relaunch of their whole line and how are you supposed to get invested in that true and true. One oh, of easy. The big problems, you, you create a gala and you put all your heroes in oh, fucking oh. retarded dresses and and then you put it out to sell because that's what your audience is into. That yeah, is, that's uh, totally, totally what I'm into. That's, that's literally what happened. And that's when we saw Iceman in a dress. Oh, and then you put heels. Kevin Feige at the party in the comic. And you say, Kevin, can I have a fucking job? I'm doing a shitty comic, Kevin. And I want a fucking job writing a shitty film instead. It's more money. Because they're only interested in their careers. These mm. people, they have no interest in, in, in respecting mm. the character, respecting the history, respecting where they've come from, the people have looked after them, maintaining that. It's self-gratification. They want to, I want to do this so I can get on to the next step. Me, me, me. You, but you brought them into the industry. You let the wolves in the door. You know, listen, one of the greatest streams I've ever listened to in my life wasn't that long ago. It was last year, and it was when Chuck and... Uh, Graham were talking about uh, Bane and the creation of Bane and the 30 years of of Bane and and the thought process that went into creating that character uh, uh, from Chuck's perspective. And then when Chuck handed over to Graham from Graham's perspective and the way that they were constructing the story and how he should behave and how he should act and how he's going to interact with Batman, how he's going to interact with the Nightfall storyline, all of this, it was the most fascinating stream I think I've listened to as as a comic book fan. Now, now, now you got these these fucking idiots that are, are duck fucking facing on on Twitter, telling people to fuck off on Twitter. You don't, they don't, you don't care about the characters. You never have. This is this is all personal stepping stones for you. You want your your Netflix deals. You want to 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 get your name on an IP 
because what's Kelly Sue kind of been bitching about now over the last couple of days or so? The fact that the Marvels is doing so poor. Does she give a fuck about the Marvels? No, of course she doesn't. But she gives a fuck because her version of Captain Marvel's in it. And if it does well, she will get paid based off of that. Now you give a fuck. Mm. Okay. But you said earlier in the stream, you were talking about if somebody likes one of our characters, we don't care. We don't, we, we, you know, we'll listen to feedback coming through. We, the whole of Marvel's history since last 20 dozen years has been not listening. We want to push this character rejected, push this character rejected. How many times has Ms. Uh, Captain Marvel been rebooted in the last dozen years? Okay. Well, Eight yeah. times. Dude, well, no, it's, I think I think it's more than that now, um, Andrew. I remember I remember doing a video that was basically when when it's like I six time and six times in as many years back I, then. Yeah, like I I don't I've never seen nothing like that. But yeah, they were they went all in on that. They were they were clearly had plans with with her, right? But they went all in. It didn't work for some. Actually, for all of it, it really didn't work. And then they rebooted. And then they rebooted again. I, it was a lot of them. It was an it was a it was quite a bit of them, but yeah, it's like it's almost like a. I think even calling it Roman Reigns is unfair because it's like worse. It was like a they really wanted that character to succeed, and the audience said, "Guys, we're mm -hmm. not having it. We're just not not as Captain Marvel, at least you know Miss Marvel. Maybe right, was Brian Frank Reed Cole? writing." Brian Reed writing that early 2000s run of Carol Danvers, if that had carried over and you told him to write her as like, even I don't think she should be called Captain Marvel, but if you want to do that, if you had him writing it, I think that they would have actually made it work. I don't okay. think it would be outselling Amazing Spider-Man anytime soon. That would have it actually yeah. been received because that run of his on Miss Marvel sold very well. Yeah. Like for that tier of book. I gotta ask the sauce because I know, like, obviously, I gave giving them all this praise about like Black Widow. Um, so, is, is that like one of the things that you guys, when you had been doing this stuff, or like, fuck that stuff? Let's just see. We can even just talk about Black Widow. Is it a matter of like, hey, I'm gonna do my research before we start writing, and I I, I need to understand this character before I start writing? Um, that makes that work as good as what it does. Or, or what it did um like what's the thought process and why you're able to make it work versus why some people don't seem to fucking get it oh my god you guys have um sorry i got distracted by that <laughs> uh, first of all thank you if anyone you. has picked up black widow no restraints play thank you uh if you like to watch pedophiles die <laughs> this is a That's good it. book for you. Yeah, yeah. This I is need a to good get book that. for you. Yeah. I will say one thing. Uh I didn't have we the Marvel characters were our friends growing up big time. I didn't have to do the research I did on Natasha, just like anytime someone asks me to fix the characters, I went to all the fan boards and I looked at what the most recent complaints were. And they were all uh that she is no longer who she was. Like she's a Russian spy. She's black black widow is deadly. She's yeah. a murderer, uh, a good murderer, but she kills people. And when Marvel asked us to do a story for her, they said, can you make her who she was again? Do you remember? And I was like, yeah, I mean, you guys kind of forgot who she was. Yeah, we, we were uh, riffing actually on a Marvel Ma Max series and one of the editors, Jacob Thomas, who is fucking awesome and is the only reason that book even happened. Uh, he hit me up and he's like, do you think you could do a Black Widow Max? And we we're like, you mean rated R? And I was like, I don't think any of the Marvel girls have a rated R comic. And we're like, especially not Nat. And he said the movies made her a little softer, make her as hard as possible. So Jen and I were like, what's the worst thing possible? Yeah, we need someone for her to kill, but someone no one will be mad about. And we're like, you know what? Child sex traffickers. And uh, we wanted to make nerds feel happy, so we went to Magifort. We wanted to put in a bunch yeah, of good for you. Even when she goes there, she's dressed like Patch. If you're a super nerd, that's what uh, Wolverine dressed up when he went there. So it's mm -hmm. just like, if you're a geek, you're like, yay. And if you're not a geek, you're like, I didn't know Black Widow murdered like this. This is cool. She's got a lot of great one-liners while she does it. She's got a good sense of humor about this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, after that, uh, what was the next one we were... Uh, they asked us to write Wonder Woman right after that. 
Uh, and that story never got printed, but they paid us for it. So it exists. There's a really good horror uh, Wonder Woman story that exists. But the first horror story ever written for her. And she's the opposite of Nat. And I'm not a DC person. So we read so many books. We looked at everything and we found something that had never been done before. But we had to. The cool thing was that she wouldn't hurt. She wouldn't never do anything the way Nat would do it. She's a very good, just yeah, different character. character. Yeah. Mm. She, yeah. No, she's uh, she's wicked. She is, yeah. They're I, both compassionate, except Nat's compassionate in the way like she puts a rabid dog down. That's her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, it's all there in the comics. And it's so funny because like as a nerd, every time I opened a book, I would read and be like, this is great. Or I'd be like, why didn't they do this? Because that's so obvious. This should have happened. And then so a lot of the times when we get a story like that, we're like, it would be so nice to see a story where you get to see what Wonder Woman was like back in the day and when she was actually kind of a scary thing to be around and what, what kind of scary situations she could act through. And uh, I can't NDA for the rest of this. Yeah. <laughs> it was really sick. Um, and uh, what else? I would say also it's so important to keep the voice of the character through when you're writing them yeah. because, you know, if Natasha says or does something not – Natasha you would know you yeah. would just it would just feel wrong Eddie Brock was one of my favorite characters and I had to stop reading him because no matter every single writer didn't just write him differently his personality as Eddie Brock was so different yeah, yeah, like yeah. Eddie Brock that had the mother that died in childbirth and the dad never loved him so he was a try hard and he was always like never good enough I like I liked him I didn't like the uh, kind of raving lunatic, and then later he was a bit of a pussy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I will probably discuss this more on Tuesday for sure. But what I one thing that really stood out when I didn't read No Restraints play <laughs> the book you never read. And what was your I favorite part? <laughs> didn't read it. Didn't read it, so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> is when is when Ed is is looking at Natasha after she's rescued the children, and she changes her demeanor to not scare the children and he's sort of like there at the doorway looking and and smiling and then the lady comes along and says oh don't misread this situation this isn't a soft woman and i was just like that is so good that is so fucking good because I, and i was just like oh i was like well that, that's that was brilliant that was yeah. absolutely brilliant uh because it, it just it said so much about uh natasha just just with that you know, you could read, you could, you know, you're reading her facial expressions and her elements, but just hearing that and then, because I, cause when I was looking at Ed, looking across from me, you sort of like, yeah, he's kind of getting a bit googly eyed here and Natasha's showing off a bit of a soft spot here and maybe he's thinking, oh, and then she's got, no. <laughs> she's going to yeah. fuck you up. If you fuck around, she's going to find out with you. All right. So it was great. I, I love, I absolutely, which I didn't read. Yeah, yeah, the book. If you're you not read. reading it as that means a lot to us. And <laughs> reading about it or telling anyone about it that was really cool. Yeah, I thought Thank not. Us. Yeah, most definitely no. But and I can, you know, we speak from experience with how they're handling Yaira and even some of the other characters. It is with all the, the other work it is that we're working yeah, on. Uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Um, who's out there? Who's out there? Uh, 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 <laughs> yeah. so, I got you. I got you. Uh, NDA is in the chat. Yeah, we. So tell me but, more. But I want to talk about the other characters. Yeah, if you'd like to know more. <laughs> but no, I do. I do appreciate how you. you know, they'll ask questions. Sasuke will ask questions. They'll be like, "Hey, is this something the character would do?" Right. Or is this something that or could they do that? Does this make sense? Because they want there to be some level of consistency. And I think that's what. What has turned so many people off of what's happening with the mainstream. We talked about this again on one of the thousands of other shows me and as were on the, <laughs> the the recent one of the recent. It was a, one limited series of Batman. Right. Where Batman is flying uh, over people that are actually looting. Oh. Right. And then Batman, instead of doing something, even if he has something else to do, throwing something as much of a freaking smoke bump, do something. He's just going right over it, says, hey, they got insurance. And he just keeps going. I'm like, that's that's not Batman. That's yeah. like anybody that remotely knows this character 
knows that Batman would never do that. That is not Batman. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and to me, that is a writer that is basically saying, hey, I don't care. These, these are, This is how I feel. This is how I would approach it if I was in this position. So they're writing Batman like they're themselves. And that's just not who the character, that's not who Batman is. They see yeah, the characters as platforms rather than seeing themselves as caretakers of these IPs. I mean, I, I, like I, that should be a privilege. You get to write yeah, Batman. Absolutely. Right? I don't, I don't know the, if you're the, aware. The privilege is their own ego. That's the privilege. Yeah. Which, yeah, I don't know if you guys are aware, but they made a new uh, Batman story. It's on Webtoons, and it's about Batman being a single dad raising foster children. I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> yeah, I just I just wanted you to know that's out there. He the doesn't right. have the emotional availability for he that. He never adopted Robin, did he? Yeah, Robin just stuck <laughs> around. He's like, so I don't know. Shit. It hopes you don't die. Get me another Robin. And they made Damien look Hispanic instead of you know. I think I did hear about that. I think I did hear about that one. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, I, <laughs> fucking shit. Um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, fuck. But the, to what you were saying about the uh, the way that Batman behaved, and and I responded because I think it's the real BBC when you're on the real BBC. Yeah, yeah, I think that was what it was. Yeah, yeah. And I responded by saying, in Batman Year Two, Batman Year Two starts off with the bat signal going up into the sky, mm -hmm. and there's a group, there's just a bunch of burglars in in a in a house. And they just like sort sort of see the bat signal and carry on. And the next thing, Batman comes, just comes bursting through. Like he's already been there watching them. He just comes jumping down. And they're just like, what the fuck are you doing with us? We're just, we're just burglars. We, you know, we thought it's just like, oh, there's, nothing's too small. Nothing's no. too small for me. That's Batman. And, and it's, and it's just like that's Batman. Yeah. yeah. He spots it. He sees it. You know, he could have been just swooshing through, seen it. No, yeah. you're getting it, mate. He's gonna handle it. He's gonna handle it. And that's. I think that's what's missing and, and why there has been such a oh man, just a big shift in interest because you know we're getting versions of characters that nobody asked for. Nobody asked for, nobody asked about, nobody um nobody wants that. Um, but they continue to put it out and they put people on. Look, I get it. You know, it's their cronies. Maybe they know a person that knows a person. Hell, that's how technically Stan Lee um became uh being a part of Marvel. However, you got to get people that understand these characters if they are to, um, you know, pique people's interest. You can't just be saying, hey, here's Joe Blow. They don't know shit from shit. And I'm going to have them do this prominent character or this character that someone likes. And if you guys don't like it, well, something's wrong with fucking you. <laughs> this audience is going to pick up on that. It, stop insulting their intelligence. And I think that's what's happened. You know what I mean? They treat this medium like it's just uh, a medium for brainlets and that's just not what this is like if you insult the the reader they they will know and they will reject your shit um they've, they've shown that they absolutely uh, uh will do that like it, it's i think what these guys think is they 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 think that they know better than everybody else as readers right you're yeah. the creator and you think you know that's always a mistake right hell what what we just going back and forth with someone like some I, it was somebody i posted yesterday uh, what's the day? It might have been fucking the day. Days running together where the guy was like, what, you make shit for the fans? I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know like, that. Yeah. Like, like, you like, have the audacity to just <laughs> listen. You're going to do exactly what the fans want. And if they ask for something different, you're going to give them that? Are you insane? <laughs> That's how we're making money. <laughs> Damn. I don't know, Eric. I don't know. That sounds uh, sketch. I don't quite got this thing fucking figured out, uh, apparently. But that's how... That, that I think that speaks to the, the cultural fucking problem that things are so fucked that people think it's abnormal that you would give something to the, <laughs> the buyers, that you want to give the buyers something that they fucking want. They find that to be bizarre. I know, as you, you were going to say something. Yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right. Uh, a writer should always be ahead of its audience and not vice versa. Mm -hmm. Right? That doesn't mean they have to look down to the audience or, or, or you know, be condescending towards the audience. I'll take this. When I'll take this for example. This, in terms of stories, it's not complicated because it's set up. Yeah, you know, you know what she's there for. You know what she wants to do. So you have the setup. Yeah, you need to you need to do the fine details. They need to be woven in there. And I I 
I thought this was going in a direction and then it didn't go in the direction that I thought it was at the end. And I was like, okay, you got me. Yeah. And I liked that. I liked that the writers, it was ahead of the story. It was ahead of me as, as a storyteller. The same with Chuck Dixon. Every time I wrote Chuck, uh, read Chuck Dixon, I didn't think, oh, this, this, this guy is, is you know, way too intelligent for me. Yeah. But it, I, I would totally be like, oh, this, this guy is ahead of me. This guy, this guy is taking me on a journey, but he's making sure that he is the one leading. And we're not, nowadays, when we're watching all this garbage or reading this garbage, it's because we're way ahead. Because it's not, it's not well thought out stuff. Yeah. You know, there's there's no complexity there. It's so superficial and basic. So we, we're ahead of the, the story. We're ahead of the writers. How many times have we done a stream in recent times where we've been discussing a TV show where we've come out with way better ideas than has actually been delivered Yeah, because the 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 process says it should be going here. But then you find, oh, no, there was just nothing there all along. And he just... Sure. And so you're wondering how we how we get to that. It's Pleasure giving your written. audience what they want because you want your audience happy at the end of the day. That's how you get them coming back, but at the same time, not giving them necessarily exactly what they expect. Yeah. Because you want to keep them on their toes as well. You want yes. to keep them guessing. So that otherwise, like if they could predict the whole thing, then why aren't they writing it? Right. <laughs> because that, that's True. really how it is with modern modern comic books, modern uh comic book movies, and all of that. You want your audience happy. That's how you keep them around. That's how you keep them coming back. That's how you stay in business. But you don't want them to necessarily be able to predict the whole thing from A to Z. Right? Yeah, what's Th the that's fun a net? delicate balance. That's a delicate yeah. balance. That requires good writing. Absolutely. Unfortunately, the mainstream's mostly bereft of that. Yeah, they don't because have it. They're, they're so, um, so restrained by what they can do. They're so restrained because they're not allowed to do this or that or the other. They're not allowed females to have femininity because now femininity is apparently weakness when femininity can't be, you know, can be easily deflected into other very, uh, very clever beat points. Black Widow is Black Widow for a reason. She's a femme fatale. Yeah. You know, she's just like Catwoman, just like Ada Wong. These are femme fatales. They have a classic trait. Their classic trait is they are deadly and sexy. Yes. And that's how they disarm you. Their looks, their, their body language, everything about them, the way they hold themselves, the way they talk to you, the way they seduce you. And seduction doesn't necessarily mean get you into the sack. Seduction can be done through conversation, clever conversation. But once you realize you're disarmed, it's too late because they've got you. Yeah. You're in the trap. You're in the web. You're done, mate. It's over. That's the beauty of a femme fatale. Now, of course, every woman that we see on the Marvel screen is pretty much stoic and bland. Stoic and bland because they're not allowed in any way, shape, or form to show vulnerability. Vulnerability is a great trait. Again, vulnerability shows the humanity of somebody. Vulnerability can show a little bit of compassion, weakness, exploitation. It ha these are easy. Same with masculinity. You need a man to drive things. If it's a male-led project, he couldn't be. Should be led around by somebody. He shouldn't be the secondary character in his own book. He needs to lead from example and have the people below him look up to him. That's how it operates. And in Batman, Batman's the fucking alpha. He's the alpha of alphas. Yeah, true. He's got yeah. Superman looking up to him for Christ's sake. You know, this this yeah. is how it is. And he's a man. He's not even super powered. And yet he's the one that they probably all the heroes and villains in DC fear the most. Yeah. A man. And how do you make that happen? It's, it's good writing. Yeah. It's how you portray him, how he uses his, his fear, how he uses his personality, how he uses his skills everything he's well trained not just in martial arts he's trained in everything psychology breaking people down all the this is not allowed anymore you I, I when i picked up that hawk girl comic to admittedly to roast the shit out of it it was it was like are you are you seriously are you fucking retarded are you fucking retarded because i could give this i could say to a five-year-old can you write a story about a hawk girl she's a she's a female and she's kind of got a hawk costume. I guarantee they'll come up with a better fucking story than that crap. You because there was that? no story. <laughs> Tell me, you didn't pay money for that. Of course I did. Do you know why I paid my money? 
So I I can rightly have my say with no clapback. Yeah. That's why I pay my money. That's yeah. why I pay it. So when the people on, on Twitter argue with me and call me ists and phobes and isms and all this kind of stuff, I turn around and I can say to them, where's yours? <laughs> I paid for mine. Where's yours? Use the Marvel <laughs> Unlimited list, bro. Ah, yeah, show us. <laughs> oh, can't Remember do that. that one, show us your boxes. Show us your long boxes. Show can't do that. Because you're fake. You're a fake bitch. You're a fake ass bitch on Twitter. You don't care about this thing. What you care about is the ideology behind it. The ideology that's ruined the comic and ruined the character. Yeah. We we mal us us ists phobe isms and all that. We care. You know that's that's our sin. That's our sin. That's our Mayor Cooper. That's a fact. Absolute fact, man. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, man. And like I said, things have come full circle with the people that we've been brought on um, in some ways they were either under underappreciated and blacklisted or whatever. Uh, and I'm glad to have them here. I like the Saskas, like the uh, Chuck Dixons and the Mike Barron's and Joe Bennett's of the world, man, these guys do wonderful work and I can't wait for everybody to, uh, to be able to pick up on uh, those books. So we got a bunch uh, to flop that we're about to be at with the hour and 45 minute mark. I just want to, for the panel here, cause I know everybody's got shit to do. Are y'all are y'all good? If anybody needs to bounce, y'all can bounce. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah, there's, All right, cool. there's this All miracle right. thing called coffee. Dude, I've, I've got <laughs> I've got Caro. I've got Kara. I've got the lovely Saskas. You're pretty all right. You pay my checks. Um, <laughs> and then there's that guy Az. Az is a pretty cool darn guy. You know, so I'm I'm good. We're good. Okay, cool, cool. So I'm gonna fly through these. Then, because uh, I know we got some good questions, good little talking points here. Uh, Avery, five months as Rip Reverse. Uh, are you not entertained? All six of you <laughs> are treasure Saskas, are one being two inseparable halves. Okay. Aww, we respect true. that. Uh, I mean, you just can't see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we appreciate you all. Be great. Thank you so much, Avery. You know, I love to see you here, man. In the chat, book Mark with a 20. Uh, so congratulations yeah. to you all. Thanks to you all as um, Alpha Core number one. I was almost at a million twelve thousand. Appreciate y'all um, showing all that love. Where am I at? Okay, we got head case laboratory with a five. So I hope Silverback can uh, negate other <laughs> accepts powers, uh, which means his opponents will have to uh, fight in close combat against Silver Silverback. Excuse me, abnormal strength. Okay, interesting, interesting, interesting. Self look, right. self inserts lame and gay. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> An uh, Easter egg. Easter egg, potentially, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, Brandon Clark with a five says, we are the River fans and sub $1 million campaigns. It's not what we do. Okay. I respect that. <laughs> yeah, little, Brandon. Little, yeah. Little, 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 uh, Brian, I, I respect that. Uh, best name I can think of with a two says failure is not what we do. That's mm. <laughs> what the man said. Uh, hometown hero with a two says, grass to the Riververse future is looking mega bright. It is. And it's thanks to all of you wonderful uh customers favorite part i am black's will hashtag pow, that, that didn't happen black ice um <laughs> black's will uh appreciate that uh thank you so much you got my man's got it there with a 10 says one anarchist becomes president of argentina and another is king of comics uh what a what a time to be alive hell to the king yeah um hey, yeah man. Javier won uh i did a video on that that's uh I, i'm disappointed and in, in I, I should say the west in general It'd be cool that, if we could have um, nice things here too. You know? Yeah, uh, the first like li in our lifetime, libertarian, like ab admit it, not like a guy that just you know, okay, you got a liberty, likes he's liberty on this, full fucking blown goddamn libertarian, like ANCAP, like me, like you know what I mean, like becomes a fucking president of a country, a leader of a country, uh, and it didn't happen in the U.S. First, uh, you ought to be a fucking shamed of yourselves. Uh, United States should be ashamed of yourselves, but at minimum, I had a lot of my Argentinian partners reach out to me, South American partners reaching out to me. Um, congratulations. Um, again, hope it works out. Um, I, I know you guys are stoked as well as you should be because stuff like this doesn't happen. Uh, so yeah, that did happen. Shout out to my man's Dan with that 10. We have uh, Garfield's Bizarre Adventure with a five. I says, hey, Ripper and everyone, what is everyone's thoughts on Scott Pilgrim's Netflix situation? Also, it's, I think we just talked about this. I think we talked about it before 
or after you had well no before you sent that yeah uh with a five also it's crazy the creator is on board well you gotta look at that stuff with a grain of salt like this is the thing not everything just because the creator is on board of something does not mean that they it was their idea right um definitely if the i don't know who actually has the rights to that shit um you know that's that whoever has, still has, it. has all the rights to to scott pilgrim Brian okay, so he still yeah. has the rights to so it. he has the rights to, he has the rights to it netflix is involved in some sort of way um so it, look neil neil fucking guyman <laughs> Uh, he gaslit everybody on fucking Sandman, right? Uh, when we saw the talk. so it, the shit happened. Jerry Conway created the fucking Punisher. Uh, he, he, he shit happened. Things happen. Uh, there's gonna be some look. That's with any sort of creative thing that you do. Um, they don't hit it all the time, right? And um, it, shit happens. Uh, but yeah, we talked about the Neil situation when that happened, and uh, and so also it happened with um. What was the other thing that they recently adopted? Oh fuck! It was a bunch. Of, oh, There's man. so many. How can you pick yeah, one? Yeah, Percy right. it, it Jackson was. and the Olympians. They're doing yeah, how to train your that, dragon. That was what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. yeah, got and gaslit on it. Everybody, all the fans, and that's the thing that I don't like. Right? Um, I get it. If you do something and it doesn't land, it doesn't land. Um, but when you do something and clearly it's against the vision of what it is that you originally had and spelled out to them. I don't think it's right to gaslight the audience. Like they're the fucking crazy ones. Right. So when I see someone like Neil say, Oh, well, that's okay. I'm part of it. It was always like this and all that shit. I'm like, no, it wasn't always like this. Um, and I, I, it's, it's disrespectful to people that have paid their hard earned money for this material that they've been buying of yours. And then you like switch it on them. They have every fucking right to be like, they don't like it. And they have every every fucking right to be like, look, man, that's 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 a weird that's a weird thing, right? It's, I don't like the whole gaslight thing. I think pisses me off. Uh, Pat I hated Wood. it. I hated it when he came out and he was just kind of like, I'm just so excited that I get to retell this story with a modern lens. And I was like, how uh -huh, much money uh -huh. did they just give you? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to imagine, right? Like when they they sign those deals and get money for them. I gotta believe that there are some non-disparagement clauses written into. Well, that. no, so it's like, not like he's gonna come out and be every... like, "Oh, this is horrible and 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 against my original vision," right? Yeah. He's not gonna oh say yeah, that. he I just mean, got paid tens of thousands of dollars. I know crap. for a fact yeah, or that publishers do that. I've seen it in contracts. I know that pu that publishers will do that. That if you say anything that could be seen in a negative light against that that uh that content. It could they could bring it against you and sue you for it. Yeah. So that is why a lot of them are having to keep their mouth shut, and, and that's whether the, they that, like it or not. And that's the thing that you got to be careful about, and why I obviously we don't have to do that at all at the Riververse. But I and the ceilings have been blown through, right? We don't have to. Things have changed, um, but I do believe that's why so many people have their properties um, being ad adapted by bigger companies. Uh, I get it, right? I understand the attraction um there and definitely if they're going to give you a bunch of money like and they're going to tell you to shut the fuck up right uh i get it i wouldn't do it but you know I don't, i'm not in a position where i have to fucking do it uh but some people will get there they feel like they hit a ceiling and they're like all right fuck it uh, they're gonna give me 10 million dollars to bastardize this shit you know what i mean i get a producer credit you know so fuck it and they just do it they go along with it and that's the, that's the part like Again, you're insulting your audience's intelligence. It, once you start to gaslight them and tell them, well, I'm, it's okay, I'm part of it. No, you're fucking not. Uh, we see that, and it's it's against how it, you, it used to be, and, and that's okay. No, it's not okay, but you get what it is that I'm saying. Like, just a fucking, I'd rather them just be like, yeah, I kind of uh, took the money and ran, but they, they ain't going to ever fucking say that. I and respect you said it in your video about the Scott Pilgrim shit earlier this afternoon, where it's like, well, yeah, you took that ten million, ten million dollars, but if they're offering me offering me ten million dollars, you can for make this, it. You can make it. Well, they think they can make at least that much, minimum, minimum, if not double or triple that off of this. So then, what do I need to be doing and correcting in my thinking yeah. process to make that myself without them having anything to do with it? Yeah, I mean, to your point, and I, I do think that every creative should be looking at it through this lens. Now, things have changed. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure the sauce, you guys can speak to it, just how technology alone, just in like the last 10 years has 
completely changed the game as far as what people are able to do. And people are able to uh, have control over their properties and do these things that were once like a pipe dream, right? It, it, it could, it used to be a pipe dream to be able to do your own short film. Uh, oh, yeah. do, your, do your own animation and stuff, but things have changed a lot. Like, um, and I think that creatives that, you know, you tap into something, right? It worked out and you have an audience. I think you should start looking at it through that lens now, less of who can I get to pay me a bunch of money to do this shit and look at it more like, how can I produce this? Um, or at least be per part of it, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and making this idea sort of come to life without having to compromise um you know what what it's about because you know you've given yeah i mean obviously if someone inherits it or they pay a bunch of money for it they're going to get the ultimate say as far as how it's produced you may get a, a say but you're not going to get the ultimate say and then at that point if they do do something that does bastardize that property you have to go along with it and i, I again i could understand in the past where people felt that they had to absolutely do that in order to thrive but a lot has changed, and, and I think that people should be looking at it differently now and look, being more creative with how, hey, you can probably make this happen yourself if you already had the following um, uh, with that g given property. So, you know, that's my position on it. Um, uh, Patrick Robinson, I appreciate that. Says Riververse to the Moon with five months. Uh, my man's Michael Bancroft. What's up, man? Love to see you here. It says uh, one milli. Shout out. And yes, we have it. One Millie, that's crazy. Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. That's crazy. Uh, 20 gifted. Uh, we got, yeah, we had almost 70 new members for the stream. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. That's crazy. Uh, Septicamic with a one month says, Shout out to you guys, always gifting subs. Mm -hmm. Thanks for all of them. Well, shout out to you. I'm glad you're getting those subs in. We got the wave blur with a five. Meanwhile, Eric had a private meeting with Frank Miller to bring him on. Uh, I cannot confirm that. Uh, <laughs> NBA. Uh, uh, India, yeah, India, India, India. Uh, <laughs> can I confirm that? Harry Toe with a five says, shout out to the designers of the Riververse Studios t-shirt. It looks amazing. Yes, that was a collaborative effort. The actual um, like art of it all was uh done by the our animation team and then of course we had eric put his little spin on it and uh that's how we got in the uh got the shirt itself and shout out to them it looks great i love how it came out and you guys are gonna love it once you see it um thank you so much for that harry toe with a uh i just read that excuse me uh patricio with 40 months damn it's a long time being a oh, member yeah. that's a fucking long time says keep being great team I'm uh, going to keep buying every cover. Well, I appreciate that. Of course, we will have you around as long as you're willing to be around. And then we got some cocky son of a bitch what? named Bert oh. with a hundred dollars and doesn't say jack fucking shit. There's no, there. it's not even a sticker there. Just the motherfucker drops a hundred and uh, leaves. And um, okay. of course, as I always say, I do respect a <clears throat> cocky son of a bitch that will do something <laughs> like that. That's to drop a hundred dollars. We got the saloon emotes already going in the chat. <laughs> The lone double doors emotes. That's a cocky <laughs> son of a bitch. And he has to be respected. Bird up with a hundred. That ain't cheap, by the way. Uh, thank you so much for that, man. Uh Scott W with a gifted five. Uh young group of five nine memberships. That's uh five gifted again. Holy shit. Thank you so much. We got 20 from uh Starlight. Says hell all uh, you guys are killing. I'm looking forward to seeing more Chadron and any other uh, unique villains you guys come up with. That's much Chardon. love. Oh, yeah, there's some new villains, obviously, in the Chug. Chuck Book got a cool uh, group of villains that have been introduced in, in, in Yairov's book. We got a bunch of villains that have been introduced in uh, some other books. You're gonna, it's, it's a lot of cool shit. A lot of cool shit on the uh, horizon. So thank you so much. Uh, Dan with a 10, I can't tell you uh, how awesome it is to have creators like you, the Saskas, Dicks, and Bennett, etc., who are as excited about creating this universe as we are to read it? Yeah, this is a this is a light dream. I can speak for myself, for me. Like I'm fucking having a goddamn blast. <laughs> I'm having. And you're working blast. around the clock. Yeah, I don't stop. I, I, shit, literally. I, and after this stream, I'll be fucking working again. So I can confirm. I can <laughs> confirm that Eric gets about three hours of sleep. And the way that I figured this out is because that's not when he's tweeting. <laughs> that's when i figured it out 
Yeah, I'm always Detective uh, Carol. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm always working, but that speaks to how fun everything is. Everything is is fun. I'm having a blast creating uh, in some capacity. And again, we do this all for you guys. So the fact that the 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 customers have allowed us to to be able to have a blast like this, and you know you, we have a demand here. That's what it's all about. So as long as you guys, uh, you know, you keep wanting it, we'll keep giving it to you. Um, and I'm uh, having a blast. So it's easy to work hard and uh, forever uh, once you once you love what you do. But you're real cat with a two just ordered uh, icon. Uh, I guess you meant I saw him. Uh, <laughs> number uh, two uh, says uh, keep the Riververse growing. Appreciate that. But he's Thank not going to read it. So why does he need to get the name right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> you know, yeah, nobody reads it. That's true. Tim Allen with a five. Uh, raise the meat horn and hoist the axes. Hell. The Iron Age, he says. Thank you so Skull. much. Shout out. Hell yeah. Uh, best name I could think of with a <laughs> a five effect that the mainstream media forgets uh, is when you make a nerd happy, they will not shut up about it to their friends so they can enjoy it. Well, that's, I mean, the Riververse is an example of it. I mean, it's strictly word of mouth here. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you give people what it is they want, they'll show their enthusiasm and they'll talk about it and then they'll convert other people into being fans of the product. So, um, you know, or convince them to at least give it a shot. So, yeah, that I mean that's the easiest way to grow your audience is just to give the audience that you, you you're targeting what they want. Um, again, basic economics, but doesn't seem that way these days. Buddha Cafe with a five yeah it reminds me of a woman uh, sitting in the back of a bar in the shade waiting for something to pop off. She's <laughs> uh she's she's got some some uh s some funk to her. Let's say that much. <laughs> Uh, kind of feels like she'd be the person to start the fucking popping up. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's what, how she comes across to me. Yeah, I can, yeah, for sure. Uh, might pop it off, pop, pop the bar fight off. <laughs> uh, yeah, NDAs though. <laughs> Ira Brown, which would have did, says late to the party, but congratulations on the million dollar. I appreciate that milestone again. Haters are gonna cry in their cat food for this moment. <laughs> uh, yes, we've seen a lot of it, and people have been <laughs> mad. And our man's Kana White, what's up? Ah! And, uh, congrats. Woo! We're really uh, grateful to con uh, contribute to the river work. Let's go. I got some stuff I'm actually sending you uh, after this stream. Kanan, I uh, love Kanan to death. He is fucking incredible at what he does. He is the, if you guys got the short box, he did that. If you've seen the um, the covers for both Yaira as well as uh, the, as well as um, the Gooding book. Look, there's that Kanan's awesome artwork. He's doing a lot for us, man, uh, these days. So uh, big shout out to uh, Kanan, man. He's incredible. That, that man's available for literally any work whatsoever is criminal. Criminal. I agree. And that's why I'm going to keep sending them fucking work. Oh, oh well. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Exactly. Our game. Kane. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kane has done so much, man. He's done He's done so much for us, and he's going to continue to do good work uh, for us. Uh, so big shout out to my man, Kane. And, uh, I'm so glad. Beautiful Yaira. He draws yeah. a mean oh, yeah. Yaira. Holy yeah. crap, does he do a good one. I yeah. might have seen some Yaira y'all haven't seen. I might yeah. have. But yeah. I can't confirm or deny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, right there, the NDA. You know, hey, Kanan, man. Love to see you, man. Shout out. We got Black Ice with a two. Says, when are we getting uh, pigeon, <laughs> pigeon lady? Uh, pigeon verse, he says. Hashtag. Give me the pigeon verse. <laughs> right, what's this damn pigeon verse? Pigeons. <laughs> uh, the true vintage uh, R&B fans says the River fans had a secret meeting about the IRA campaign. You, ha you may have Guatemalan steroid hamsters we have argentinian alpha court guinea pigs oh uh, that's uh i got i got here for that i gotta get right. our, our hamsters will go super saying two for the next yeah campaign. exactly yeah we'll, we'll, we'll they'll make sure they upgrade they <laughs> haven't even reached their final hamster. form uh quite yeah yeah that that oh that's how our hamsters are gonna look at that start of yahira we're <laughs> <laughs> gonna have to i think yeah. they're gonna yeah. i think to. they're gonna need to to be yeah, honest yeah. Yeah, good luck <laughs> Good luck, hamsters. Good luck. Shout out. Uh, we got crippled libertarian with a with the five says street level stories are great, but I love big conflict stuff. So I get excited when I heard about superpower war, uh, hell riververse and uh New Zealand. Well, shout out <laughs> crippled uh <laughs> talking about that. Uh crippled libertarian <laughs> with the five. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. We got we got a little bit of everything in the riververse, and as our no catalog gets a little bigger. You guys are going to see that. What all we have to offer? Lower lips, liquor with a five. 
uh, later down the road, you're going to do anything like Marvel Universe handbook, uh, but for the Riververse. I don't know. I know what you, I got a, I got fucking, fucking handbooks. I got back there. I got a bunch of encyclopedias. I got all that shit. It is that they released. We'll see. We'll see. We got a lot of characters to create before I can justify something like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I guess a, a, a cool way that we do it, you should get the cards if you have not already. Speaking of cards, this Jairus card right there. Uh, guys can get. That's one of my two favorite ones. The other yeah. one is Michael Copper, who well, y'all are about to see a bit more of. Yes, you are about to see a bit more of Michael uh, Copper. New cards will, of course, be released going into the Yara campaign. So we do put some uh, nice information on the back of those uh, cards there. So uh, be sure to check that out. All right, what else we have? Uh, Headcase Laboratory with a two says best adaptation for a comic is in Invincible. Says uh, Headcase Laboratory. Uh, I'm not as much knowledgeable on in Invincible, so I can't even make that. I can't. I mean, I can't argue you. Um, <laughs> you know, so this Darren Fontana. Oh, and this guy. About, this says, who is going to write my biography? I should have been the first book and not that bitch Avery. Says Darren. <laughs> <laughs> It's uh, Daryl Fontano himself as he stops by and gives me a five. He has a lot of money to throw around. So, uh, <laughs> he does, but that's a lot of something coming from somebody who got his ass whooped in the last book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he did get a nice little uh, parting gift by um, uh, Lincoln. So um, that was quite interesting. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's not happy about that. No. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, though. Uh, Darren Fontaine, <laughs> Darren, I forget, forget we got that silly uh, Darren Fontaine you know, uh, emo. I forget about that. Uh, shout out. Uh, June Teku Enigma or Engima with the five says St. Jesus George Lionheart Floyd. As, uh, as oh. always. Uh, <laughs> says. Gone but not forgotten. Gone but not forgotten. Uh, Tamani with a 10 says, seriously, I fear... Uh, that Marvel and DC, or especially the Simp Chuds, might try to kick down your Riververse Sandcastle since theirs isn't as impressive anymore. Please tell us you're watching your back. Look, man, there's always going to be haters. You can't get rid of them. Um, you know, we just do what we do, and we plan accordingly. We have our contingency plans wherever they need to be, and we do our thing. Uh, but, yeah, best believe we would never go down so easily. So it, Your sandcastle's made out of titanium. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Uh, Good luck kicking it down. Guys, the guys that rock with us, we're going to be fine. Uh, we, we're going to be just, just fucking fine, man. Uh, trust us on that. So we're just going to keep growing, keep thriving. Thanks to you all. So shout out. We got Justin with a 20 says we need a pigeon verse with a, a husky to re represent Ripper and his <laughs> arch nemesis, the silverback. Uh, <laughs> says Justin with a 20. I'm guessing he's referring to my husky on animal uh, or party yeah. animal. Party animal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That I use. Uh, my husky with his scarf. Yeah. Uh, Garfield's bizarre adventure with a five says, uh, I disagree with superhero fatigue argument. Indiana Jones, Lightyear, Strange World, and Willow had nothing to do with superheroes. Woke fatigue. Well, yeah, I mean, there's been some fucking duds that are out there, uh, that aren't superhero film. Yeah, I think the fatigue thing has always been intriguing. I think the Riververse in itself shows that there's no fucking like that's not a thing. I think there's something that people expect and want, and uh, they're just not able to put out what people. I don't even, I mean, they may know, but they're too stubborn to to do what needs to be done. Uh, and it's creating this, uh, that gives them that way out. That's why access media will always, that's why they use it. And maybe they're not using it like some other people use it in terms of the term itself. But that gives them an out because they get to blame the genre. They get to blame the audience as they so mm. often have when they get to say that. So they say, well, it's just y'all. Uh, they, don't Let's like. put it this way. The Marvels is in abysmal, unprecedentedly so, failure for Disney right now. And what are they blaming it on? Superhero fatigue and men not liking female leads. You know what Yaira's about to do? <laughs> Prove them wrong on both. Yeah, that is uh, very, very true. Uh, we're going to literally make more money because they're going to lose 300. They might lose $300 million on that movie. It's not. It's not woe fatigue, Garfield. It's it's dog shit fatigue. Dog shit fatigue. <laughs> Bad content. That's what it is. Um, they got they got nothing to, 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 to quote a guy who had a rant about something. They got nothing to say. <laughs> they got nothing to say at all. They're boring. <laughs> boring. Yeah, they are boring. That was just uh, such a good rant, Dad. Well said. That's a good quote. 
Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Uh, our brown witch says nigger bands. Yes, that's what they call it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that is what <laughs> that is what they are called. Avery with a 50 says kicking the double doors, passing three different million dollar campaigns. Looks over to the right, spots Yara in ice bath, Ingrid practicing a lasso moves and Sydney chugging iron tonic uh, in the back <laughs> are the hamsters and steroids on the ground. Well, they need them. They have to. So maybe you are seeing some needle, needles around. Uh, yeah, don't mind. Hamsters. The hamsters have to ha do what they got to do. Um, and uh, they have to remain on their cycle to ensure that uh, we have operating service. So um, never mind those uh, needles on the ground. Shout out, Avery. Uh, that's uh, 50, and that ain't cheap. That's a lot of money, man. So thank you so much, man. Love to Appreciate see you here, it, as always. Been a big ambassador for the Ripperverse, man. So thank you. Uh, John, appreciate you becoming a member as well. We got five from Harry Toe. Says, I'm stoked to get my uh, second deck. Yes, uh, you will be getting another card deck soon. You will be learning about some of the characters, getting some cards uh, on the characters like, uh, uh, I'm not going to name them, but Ooh. that we're introducing Isom to. Don't make us throw NDAs Yaira. and lines up on you. Ooh. Yeah, uh, uh, Yaira. <laughs> no, uh, no, he, they said it was fine. Show more. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. I'm ready. Yeah. And Alpha Corp, but you're gonna get some cool uh uh cards very very soon. So we'll be saying with the two says question for Eric July is Alpha and Alpha Court tied. Um, well you know they. Well, let me say this: read I some two, and pay attention to Alpha Core's appearance. And I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, we got that. Um, whoa, whoa, no, 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 that's a different 50. That's a different 50. Uh, no, what the hell, Avery? Avery? This Woo. cocky son of a bitch says, as high noon approaches Team Roylings, Team Flores Park, and Team Gym Gear. Oh, shit, I need to get y'all some Gym Gear. Uh, ah. we're impressed for the draw. Uh, they hear the signal, rip a verse. What is your purpose? Be great, be great, be great. Tips hat walks out. Respect that. Uh, save comics and me. Thank you, Mr. July. Hey, Avery, man, I see you working out hard, man. Uh, I see you on X, formerly known as Twitter, all the time. <laughs> and man, yeah, I gotta get, I gotta get you some legitimate workout gear, bro. Uh, yes, please. I, I, I gotta really get like that. Sick. Yeah. yeah, I got, I gotta get y'all some, some workout gear, man, for sure. Lyra what? booty shorts. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to model them. Yeah, if you I, I, don't I, I, model them, we won't do put, it. Just put Yara over the booty; it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> there, you there you go. Maybe that's the what risk we do. Of sounding like a toxic male, I endorse this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can wear them too if you want. I won't judge you. I'm good. Nobody. <laughs> <gonna see. laughs> oh, but Avery, man, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, we got Mark with a five says, what do you think of the amazing, amazing, excuse me, digital circus in an invincible, uh, I think, pretend well for the success of the future of Ripperverse animated series. Look, there's a there's a clear demand, make no mistake, for comic book media. So what I mean by that is stuff, not comics based on comic book characters. So whether that be live action, where there's still a, there's no fucking fatigue and we if we uh, wanted to entertain that stuff, we believe there's going to be a demand. We just got to make it make sense financially. Um, you guys, have we've heard you. We've seen how you responded to, for example, if you have not seen it, go watch the official animated trailer for uh, Alpha Core. Uh, you okay. guys are going to love that if you have not seen it already. But that's showing you guys some of our capabilities. And there's an audience for it. There's, there's an audience for it. And we know that. And, uh, yeah, for sure, there's examples out there that show that, look, man, if you just give people what it is that they are maybe interested in, um, you know, you will be rewarded. And they can be in the superhero uh, genre for sure. Uh, Mark of Reality with a five, you need to make Hulk-type characters based on as uh, as uh, the silver back. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, Jake, who just sent us uh, – June, excuse me, take it with the dollars, super sticker. I can't see the super sticker, unfortunately. Uh, hometown hero with a five says thoughts on studio uh, map animation studio with animators only getting getting uh, episode ready hours before airtime thoughts on as an animator studio owner well um look as much as we praise japan about some of the material it is that they put out uh they have their own set of economic issues um especially with the uh, <laughs> 
the uh the mangakas and and look they're not without and it's a, it's a cultural thing as well these guys are fucking hard workers they'll literally oh they'll work themselves literally to like death. literally to death like literally to death it's not even yeah. hyperbole yeah no they will work themselves literally to death um that's what they do so they have that going on um i i mean i'm mm. not as familiar with uh that specific deal but it doesn't surprise me that they are kind of rushing and, and and getting trying to get stuff done as because they're constantly uh working <laughs> look you give the more time and i've learned this the more time that these guys have the best work better the work they're gonna do but when you're dealing with like series and shit man you got deadlines they gotta be met as with anything else uh, and that's why it's important that they get met so you can avoid shit like that. But that's my first time hearing about it, but it doesn't surprise me um, at all. Uh, th that's in that's in their culture for sure. So, you know, we see that with, again, their manga. So uh, we got a five from uh, Brian Ankatonin. Five gifted subs, as well as a 50. Yeah! Same motherfucker. Five gifted subs and a 50. <laughs> bomb no fucking message as cocky as ever i respect that hot i really do that is hot. i yeah. respect it I respect oh that's it. hot oh. uh we got a seven from pale eye says the more i hear from the sasuke the more i love them excited for <laughs> yara number one you have a new fan ladies by the way rogue and psylocke are my favorite x-men oh, okay? i respect that excellent taste very yeah. good taste in women very yeah. good taste very good taste actually yes Ooh. absolutely pale eyes i appreciate you um, yeah, man, they're awesome to have. I love having them here for sure. Uh, Bearded Gamer, 22 months. Congratulations, Ripper and company. You all are the best. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. We got Trace XL with a 10. It's wild when the idea that the paying customer has sway over what you produce is controversial. Uh, you can make your art and please the customer at the same time. That's true. I mean, I, I don't know why people act like they have to be differentiated uh, concepts. It's been happening uh, for decades and yes, decades and decades. <laughs> yeah, it's, not a, it's not a new thing. Uh, There's absolutely zero market research on it whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a new concept. Unexplored. Yeah. This is a new frontier. A it's such a bizarre thing. Chase Excel, I appreciate you. And yes, it does require effort in order to do that. You can do both. Uh, four months from Luso. Thank you for becoming a member. Uh, also, it says 2024 release schedule win. Uh, we're working on some stuff with our website as we kind of continue to work on our sta uh, stability. We'll see uh, when we can, where we can fit that in. But yes, our we're starting to pick up the pace. We have a lot of unannounced projects, and once those projects start to become like announced, maybe we'll we'll get on the website some like release schedule stuff, and uh, yeah, we'll make sure we get that for you. But you do know that Yara is coming out, and you know in the spring right after that, you know the Gooding book's going to be out. So yeah, okay, uh, Trace XL. Uh, that you read that? Yeah, that's the one I just read. Cool, cool. Uh, we have uh, Ripping the Silverback should obviously be announcers for the SSW. Oh, that's uh, so the five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can replace. Um, yeah, we got a lot. I got some plans of the SSW, man. Uh, I, I, again, they got teased and I saw one, and then you got to see Larry Shungite uh, go rogue uh, in um, yeah. I saw too. <laughs> and that was fun to write. That was a fun little scene to write. Uh, that was my little kind of nod to you know my love for wrestling growing up. It's almost a pipe bomb, uh, Mike moment. Yeah, yeah. yeah very um, so, so yeah, he, he, that, he looked not that read the book. So yeah, not, yeah, of course. What are you talking it, about? It was just like no, he was an amalgamation it. of Stone Cold and The Rock in yeah. one character, and it was just. <laughs> Yeah, like, was, is that what would the child would look like if they had a baby together? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was certainly my a nod to you know my love for for wrestling and uh, the fact that people are loving like what we're doing with the SSWL with the tease that you got. Um, I got a lot of plans, got a lot of ideas um, <laughs> that, that we can do. So um, I'm glad you guys loved it, and I'm glad we got the reception we got. Scorpio, appreciate that five. I uh, also got the Alpha Core as your little profile picture. I respect nice. that. We got a two for Miles says pump for Alpha Core. Uh -huh. Yara soon. Uh, Saskas rock. Yes, y'all will be coming out after Alpha Core, so be on the lookout for that. Thank you, Miles. Miles uh, Maholland is Miles Maholland. Yes, he is. Uh -huh. Miles, 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 Miles. That is very. I very understood true. that reference. That's very true. <laughs> <laughs> Obi Brown with a five says that webtoons Batman is actually pretty good. It's called Wayne Family Adventures. You guys are uh, uh, just aren't the audience. One hundred six million views on uh, webtoons. Well, 
you got to take views with a grain of salt on what like i did a video on this a while back and i also talked about this on stream this is what specific i won't out him because he requested that i not webs tune guy that has had millions of fucking millions of views and he's broke I, and he straight up told me that and he was asking for advice because yeah it's not it's not translating because views sales they aren't the same thing it's one thing to uh for having having a ton of people access free content yeah it's another thing entirely for them to be willing to pay for it mm -hmm. yeah exactly those it's are two completely some industry yeah yeah there you go exactly so it's a different animal it's a different animal uh for sure uh james with a five says as it really does feel like i'm done with doctor who for the rest of my life my second heart died today well what did something get announced today uh well i mean a couple of weeks back russell t davis confirmed that the timeless children was canon and that was the deal breaker for me so i was already done then and then they did. We have a thing over here in the UK, a charity event once a year called Children in Need, and uh, they usually put on a Doctor Who sketch on Children in Need, and they put on a Doctor Who sketch, and it had Davros, and Davros is no longer in a wheelchair, and they mm. said why? And so he, Russell T Davis, was interviewed as to why Davros was no longer in a wheelchair, and he said because I. I'm trying to get away from the stigma of, of dis disfigurement and disability being linked to evil. And I thought, Professor X fucking hates you. <laughs> what? Oracle fucking hates you. Daredevil. Daredevil fucking <laughs> hates you. I, all the disabled, you know, all the, all the heroes that have some disability or another that use it. For, and, it, and, it and, and that was just, to me, that just said... I have no balls anymore and I won't write people like people. And wow. uh, when you stop treating, uh, when you start pandering and catering and saying, well, we don't want to do this and we don't want to do that. You are neutering characters across the board. You're neutralizing characterization development, all of it across the board. So to me, I, I mean, I was already done, but if, uh, if I needed a, an extra push out the door, uh, that was certainly it, but I, I'm I'm in the same boat, James. I'm I'm not even going to entertain the 60th either. I'm just I'm all done now. Thank you. I'm done. I'll take what I've had, and I'm I'm done. Fucking Doctor Who, man. What the fuck, man? One of the greatest fun shows. My heart ever. goes out to you. I, oh. I, I I never got into it, but my heart goes out to you. It's like it's that red letter media. How's it feel to see all your favorite things destroyed? Oh, it feels great. <laughs> oh fantastic man damn that blows man um well james i appreciate that uh i'm glad we had asked to give us some uh perspective on that uh therio got a rate appreciate that uh we have also 33 months from dark ultra said is it gonna be explained in alpha core why fire guys overalls don't be, uh burn off maybe his clothes are made of fantastic full material perhaps uh you'll have to read alpha core to find out more about fire guy because fire guy well, that's not his name uh but fire <laughs> guy is uh look the <laughs> yeah <Andy. laughs> he's so hot oh, his clothes stay on there yeah you go. Perhaps. Hey. For, perhaps uh but no we have um like the, the characters that you saw in the animation are random uh including myth myth gary so <laughs> you'll, you'll see you'll see more of them and you'll learn a little bit about them going into uh the alpha core uh book so just be on the lookout with that Fire guy story is cool. Yeah. Yes. Spoiler. Yeah. What? Spoiler. It's sick. Yeah. Oh, fire cool. No. Fire cool. I can make it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cole Lee with a ten says, uh, "I hate Ripper because uh, he is able to scam me out of my money on imaginary <laughs> comics <laughs> and shirts." Yara Mill for twenty four hours. We will see. Oh, um, I, I dare you, chat. Yeah, I do. I dare y'all too to make that be a fucking. 24 hour the hamsters uh, will you die won't, yeah. no hamster can survive a million dollar yeah, day it, yeah that's true no uh, no king rules forever <laughs> <laughs> that's very true that is very true so we'll see 
We uh, are Caro's going just to... sitting there like, please stop. Please, please don't bring this light. <laughs> you guys don't understand. Like on launch days, I get there probably five minutes after Eric does to the warehouse and I sure. like set up everything and I like have, I am surrounded by energy drinks, water. <laughs> I've got all the screens up and I'm like, oh, what the fuck is about to happen? I have to. Carol is like, please music. don't break my stuff. Please don't break please. my is stuff. It, is please it like the dark us. night? Is it an hair? <laughs> We go. <laughs> it was actually weird though because this was the first time that like, nothing went wrong. So I, we were all there, and it was like I was like I don't know. I, I felt weird. Like I felt like it's like well, my, I don't have smoke coming out my ears right now. And nobody's hair <laughs> fire. Yeah, it, it, it was such a weird feeling because everything was going according to plan, and that was the, the first fans time. Under there. Made our hamsters. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. We got to give a big shout out hamsters. to our, to our hamsters for allowing that to happen. But it was such a work weird harder, chat. Yeah, you got to work. That's yeah, true. You got to work harder. Let's we'll see what happens with Yara. Those are uh, rookie numbers, chat. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's very true. Uh, in in an instant with a five says shout out to the whole team. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Well, shout out to everybody here. Uh, Harry told yeah. for forty one months says congrats to y'all working together to create something great. That is what we're trying to do here, man. Uh, off what off headner nar off headner off headner off headner yeah five sounds celtic yeah, yeah. uh we're five I'm scandinavian celtic nordic or, or maybe it's Earth something european as brandon was yeah, 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 yeah it's european as brandon not american yeah, whatever it's who cares european <laughs> uh yeah uh <laughs> says uh says brother as uh gonna do the moonwalking for everybody wants me because I remember talking about that with Ice on one never about did me do that moonwalk. I never did do my moonwalk. I can like actually moonwalk. I like by the way, like I know how to fucking do it. Do it, you uh, won't. Uh, I, I'm I'm white. <laughs> <laughs> he says I'm white. <laughs> we we both know how that ends when you try moonwalk. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, appreciate that. Uh Five, and then we got another cocky son of a bitch and bird up with a hundred dollars. Whoa! Uh, what? Do these things work? No, they don't. Fucking, I don't have my Gary buttons uh, here. <laughs> I, I had the same damn shit, but I, I, I moved over to the new a new roadcaster, so I don't have. Bow, 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 bow. Yeah, there so I can't. Go. I can't do all my audio. We need to set up some sound effects and stuff here on the back end for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll get on that. Yeah, we'll make we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. I'll get with Jordan. Well, it's a hundred dollars and no fucking message uh there whatsoever so uh yeah that's pretty that's pretty uh cocky right there man i about the that. benjamins yeah man just drops it on the Hot. table uh just leave Bird up just pulled up yeah, just, yeah. Bird up just pulled. that's true just mm -hmm. kick kick the fucking uh those wide open i respect it man appreciate that Bird up. that's another hundred dollars for him from you I and i thank you so much for that. uh <laughs> uh harry told with a five so i second the gym gear uh shorts to start yeah i'll work on some stuff um, we'll get to working on some stuff for yeah. sure. Yeah, um, your crop tops, like oh, in the yeah. 80s, dude, dude's yeah. one of those too. Oh, oh, we need the headband. She's got the workout oh, yeah. headband. Got the headband. Oh, yeah, that could be. Oh, sick. yeah. That's a good idea. That's, that's not a bad idea at all. That's a great that's a, idea. That's a, that's a, that's a, that is a fantastic idea. I have idea. like one a day, but you got to hey, be do around you want a job? To catch it. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> when we work out, we could be accidentally cosplaying as Yaira every time. Yeah. I, I, I fail to see the downside in this. Yeah. Me I might be a little Just biased. Just Yaira's fill every gym, their booty shorts, their little headband. Yeah. Let's Ooh. do it. Right, Keep talking. It. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. Oh, man. Ask and happen. leave no go off screen. Yeah, I, I, I'm just, I look, I'm I'm a visual guy. I just need to. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's visual, then we have to make the gear so that way he can see it because ah. we can't make imaginary stuff. Thank we you. We only make real stuff. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. No, that's that was CGI. That was see, that was that was a really great green screen you've got going yeah. on there, Carol. Ooh. Not real. I'm technically not real either. No, she stock is. background. We got a stock uh, AI executive assistant. Generative AI. Work. That's what this is. <laughs> uh, Andrew with a five. Your shorts are cool, but tank top. Yeah, yeah I'm a tank. Yeah. I, I literally that's all I fucking wear, so it makes <laughs> most the most sense for us to have tank tops. So I'm 100 percent game. Uh, for doing something like that, I, I wouldn't be against it. As I, uh, you know, we because we're I've talked about this at we'll have some sort of mini campaign format. It won't be like an entire campaign because we're gonna our release schedule is gonna be too fast to justify that, which will allow us to be able to focus more on other stuff 
as well, like our merchandise. And I wouldn't be against coming out with like a a collection of like gear, like yeah, so workout hey, gear for yeah, sure, workout gear, summer gear, uh, you know, rip reverse, whatever. And we have a collection, just a, just a merch drop, uh, dump on, on stuff that you guys can get. So, um, I, next I'd year, be okay. item or rip reverse. I want to see a rip reverse in some form or another. Don't care what's on it. Christmas sweater. Oh hell, fucking yeah. I am 100 percent down. Um, yes. I'm, oh yeah, that's a that's a no brainer. I mean, yeah. It will be Yara winter. Yeah, yeah winter winter has come. Never mind, winter is coming. Winter is here. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm 100 percent up for that. Absolutely. Uh, Butter biscuit with a five said the Saskas and Steph as your booty short models. Uh, just saying. Oh well. Uh, says oh and as as a top model. Uh, says, uh, hell the riververse, love you all. Hey, man, if it's gonna make us some money, I will put ass in whatever y'all, y'all <laughs> say. Don't, no, 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 Do oh, it. Eric. Eric hey, I'm a cap. You gotta understand the chat, man. I, I'm a cap. What is I'm your price as? <laughs> I'm a cap. Negotiable. We're gonna negotiate. And, right. and I respect that. I'm a cap. <laughs> myself. I'm also straight. I also have eyes. I'd like to. <laughs> I am after oh. I am always saying that I am a piece of meat. <laughs> right. Who is ready to objectify as? Oh man, no, right nobody. <laughs> <laughs> so hesitation. I'm ready. Eric is numbered. first in line. Don't I let him. Not, on. Like, yeah, yeah. Right I, 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 <laughs> all in the chat. Oh <laughs> yeah. my god! Yeah, all man. silver packs in the chat, guys. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're they're already popping up. So yeah, if, was if, a if make money. I'll I do love it. it. We can call it that ass run. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I don't oh, ask my. for much, sir. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir, can I have some more? More. <laughs> Oh, if man. you do make those I just booty shorts, though, your friend, I'm sorry. Yeah. It'd be so good. If you make them booty shorts, they're all I'm gonna wear. Yeah, right. you just gotta be around to snap a picture. It's all I'll wear. I'll wear them to the meet and greets. There oh my go. gosh, I'll wear them yeah. every time I do squats. I'll do a video. There you go. There you yeah. go. You already here. Whatever you y'all make... want. I'll get yeah. all my marketing. <laughs> 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 no, I'm not saying I'm impossible to convince. No, take, take your take your voice of reason and, and chew it. Oh man, yeah. Like if we if we go make some money off of it, we'll figure it out. I said I'm a capitalist at the end of the day. Thanks for joining us today, Oz. It was really nice. <laughs> floor ass is back. I'm on the floor now. Yeah. <laughs> floor ass is back. You know how this goes? I'm on the floor now. <laughs> floor ass is back. I right, appreciate that five butter biscuit. Uh, then we got another 50. Now the ass goes off screen. Uh, with another 50 from Brian. There's uh, nothing. It's already <laughs> over. <laughs> Are you okay, Az? <sighs> has, the floor, Sorry, uh, has the floor of shame? Con- <laughs> it's not, it's not the you? floor of shame, Kara. <laughs> it's not the floor of shame. Yet. Oh man, appreciate it. As as soon as you get those booty shorts, (laughs) neurotic said, ass needs 38 (laughs) seconds. I feel the three of us would do a really hot shoot together. Oh, yeah, Yeah. yes, (laughs) yes. Uh, refreshing. Neurotic is in the chat. Shout out, and he says, oh, what up, Gary? Hi, Gary. Hi, Gary. What's up? What's up, Gary? Uh, I'm excited to see you in a couple weeks. There you go. Shout out, Gary, man. <laughs> Love him to death, man. Uh, okay, where am I at, Brian? Uh, we got Tim from Bush and Rio Cat says, Sorry, my slip up with ice. Uh, tell <laughs> the sisters, I love Electra from Marvel Comics. Don't shout out. Oh, uh, again, you have a side close by. Oh yeah, yeah. I uh I oh god. I also like Electra. Oh shit. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Hell I yeah. learned Braille and Psy so I could seduce Daredevil. Uh <laughs> yeah, she's trained in open now in weapons because she's a nerd. Anyway, yeah. yeah, respect. I love Electra. <laughs> My cat used to be named Electra. She's in heaven, but now I'm kind of Electra. We also pitched an Electra Mortal Kombat story. For oh, Marvel. it was sick. Uh, yeah, they didn't like it. 
Oh, well, shout out. So Stanley and Jack Kirby will be proud of you. Peace. Yeah. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, what is this? You know what this is? Andrew, I'm glad to see you survived that. Oh, okay. Got it. Gotcha. Uh, I just got a box from uh my wife. She just handed it to me. It's actually from Bruce, ironically. Uh shout out, Bruce. Um, thank you. Am I supposed to open it? That, what else? Am I supposed to be opening this like right now? I am. Uh okay. Oh, we got an unboxing. Hell yeah, uh, we got it all. Oh, I'm right. in. Ah! Do it now. You got a box cutter. Wait. Oh, I got my keys up here. Uh young ripper, rip it open. Nah, man, it's just tape good, man. This ain't no just ordinary tape. I all right. It. All right, let's see what this is. I guess shout out Bruce. You see him in the chat all the time. Bruce uh, man, tell me something. My wife is instructing me that I'm supposed to be opening this right now. If Lady Ripper says to do something, we do yeah. it. Yeah. So <laughs> shout out to her. Let's see what this is. She's awesome. Yes, she is. Oh yeah, it's. He did say he was sending this to me. Oh shoot, what is it? Let's see it. Oh my god. What's in the box? It's, it's, it's a Ripper What's in the box? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, 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 man. Uh, how do I make myself fucking solo layout? How do I do this shit? There, there it is. Oh, yeah. that's, so cool. that's, that's a rip a bikini, bro. baby. Ha, it says rip five nine nice. on the license plate. There. Nice. That's, uh, that's pretty fucking sick. That's bro. clean. I uh, got the logo right there on the hood. This is fucking oh, badass. Wow. Yeah, this is that needs to go right in front of your Batman thing back there. Oh yeah, hundred percent, absolutely. Good call on that. We're we're doing that a hundred percent. Clean, big damn. This shit's clean though. Wow, you got the Lamborghini awesome. that we kept talking about. Yeah, so this is go. my Lamborghini. Yeah, my actual. <laughs> anybody, anytime people say get a Lamborghini, Lamborghini is like, in the chat. I'm boys. like, I already got the Lamborghini. It's right here. <laughs> Shout out, Bruce, man. I know you sent this to me a while back, um, and I hadn't been able to get to my box to get it so appreciate you so much for this this is fucking killer man um thank you so much holy shit that's sick shout that's out bruce awesome. man big shout out bruce I'm, i think he's probably at work at this time he'll be able to see the replay uh if you he, unless he's in the chat and i missed him but shout out man this fucking bitch is clean and hell yeah you damn right i'm putting it back there uh when i get a chance and we're gonna show this bad boy y'all damn this this shit's clean this is nice. Shout out. Appreciate you. Again, big shout out to Bruce, man. Thank you so much. Um, okay. We have uh where am I at? Where was I at? Um, I got that. I got that. Bush and Ryu Cat also gifting five memberships. Appreciate that. Good kitty. <sighs> shout out. <laughs> uh, we got Brandon with a five says found a copy of No Restraints Play. Uh, two hours drive. Oh uh, going to go pick it up tomorrow night. Major pump for Yara number one. Your fault, ass. Uh, thank. Worth the drive. Yeah, and nowhere. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, it's it perfect. is le legit, Brandon. You're gonna love it. Legit. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot. Thank you. Yeah, and I can't wait to talk to you about Yara. Oh yeah. Oh fucking yeah. Um, thank you so much for that, Brandon. Man, I appreciate that. Of Hetna with a vibe says, just a funny thought is Yaira a Southern Belle? You're going to learn a lot about Yaira and her, you know, what she is uh, in the, the Yaira book. I'm not going to NDA my fucking self. Actually, I, I am. <laughs> I'm not going to NDA my fucking self. But you're gonna, yeah, you're going to learn a lot about her in the upcoming Yaira book. Uh, let's just say that, what, what, uh, what she's all about. So. She a badass. Yara What's Mancuna. your favorite part of Isom? <laughs> uh, Miles, uh, not Miles Morales, Miles Mulholland with uh, two Canadians says, Yara Mankini, as to model equals best seller. Think so? Uh, no, I think I would bankrupt your company in a week. <laughs> <laughs> Only one way to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, uh, Phyllis Leader with a 10 said the last three campaigns have made at least a million dollars with organic marketing. Uh, have you ever thought about paying uh, for ads like, um, like paying for ads like placement and elsewhere? Yes, and no, uh, yes, in the sense that I don't want to be just spending fucking money just to spend it, right? 
So I'd have to get a return. So mm. you know, I'm I and I'm just being honest. I haven't found a place to place it, and the cost that at, that I like that I think makes sense that would allow me to get a return. So I'm thinking like this: if I'm going to market the shit, and I'm going to pay for the advertisement to get it somewhere and place it somewhere. Whatever I spend, goddamn it, I better be getting that back, right? And I better be able to see that I can get it back. But if it's a whole lot of shit that's up in the air. I can't, that's not, so it's not to say that I'm against it. It's more of, I haven't quite seen it in a way that to me will translate into, I'm not going to just be spending money just to say I spent money. If that makes sense. Maybe that doesn't make sense to some, but not yet. It's, I just don't see it yet. Um, And uh, we're doing good here, but obviously, you know, yeah, we want to expand if we can, but we just got to do it within reason, you know, uh, Koa Lee with a ten, uh, 10 says coming soon, Riververse clothing company featuring Yaira. Booty shorts, as everybody uh sounds like they're happening. That. It looks like yeah, they want that. So. Yes. Okay. Yes. Gonna... Get ready, yes. 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 I got. I have. Uh, I have one of those shirts. All right, Brian yeah. Danielson. Yeah, come I, on. I, 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 I have, I have the Miz put him in his place. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love them both. I yeah. love them both. There you go. Uh, Garfield's bizarre adventure with a five. Said by the way, Ripper. How are you able to deep fake Chuck Dixon in your CGI? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, Man, yeah, so much makeup went into it. Green screens, bro. Green I got screens. the best VFX guys in the world. <laughs> um, you know, Marvel can't even afford to pay them uh, at all. So uh, that's how we were able to deep fake uh, him into the warehouse. Um, so with that, which is also not real um, as well. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. God of Rage with five says, and what's your favorite part yeah. of the warehouse? Yes, that was. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite part was my favorite part of the warehouse. <laughs> oh my god. Um <laughs> uh, uh oh oh boy Mo Moore with a 10. I'm butchered your name. Sorry, fitted hats, please. See, think about fitted though. Like I have to get a bunch of them to fit everybody's big ass heads. So it's like <laughs> you know, it's different from like a snapback. That's why like, we have beanies. Yeah, that's why we have beanies. Yes. Do I have a beanie uh here? Uh, I thought I did. I have a bonnet. I can go get mine. But uh, mine is downstairs. Oh, my my beanie's in there. So yes, you can get our beanies. Uh, they are live and they should fit everybody's sized heads for sure. And if you're Canadian and listening, that's a toque. They're talking about toques, They're you guys. Talking about <laughs> okay. I know it got confusing there. Oh, no. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> Canadian. Oh, I thought it was <laughs> kind of weird. They're trying to communicate. What are what is <laughs> Why do you guys need toques for? You don't even have snow. <laughs> <laughs> like pe like peregrine toque? <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. That's I understood that rap. That was legit. <laughs> Not okay. flashy, but well, it is a bonnet. Well, it's mine now, it's actually my wife's, and then I stole it. <laughs> uh, what it was. Because you know, the do rags are like you know, them shits. I, I'll be tying them shits tight on my head, and like she's like, oh, I got this extra bonnet. So I was like, Well, I just take the fucking bonnet, and I, <laughs> that's all I wear is the bonnet. My wife's in the chat. Shout out, uh, Hi, shout out to Lady Ripper. Hello, lady. Yeah. <laughs> so, shout out, but yeah, but I don't have the beanie. Um, uh, reverse bonnets, maybe, maybe, uh, if I can make that make sense, we'll see. Beer, uh, I'll go get mine. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, appreciate that. 10. Okay, let me fly through these. Uh, Garfield's Bizarre Adventure with a five says, By the way, Ripper, how are you? I read that, that's the one I just read. Okay, um, Q Ball with a five says, Sent you a direct dono. Oh, shit, man, I'd be fucking forgetting about that. shit. Oh shit! Um, <laughs> what are the direct donos looking like? We haven't even touched that. Yeah, we haven't even touched that. I hope there ain't Thank some cocky you. son of a bitches that I just like skipped uh -oh. over. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm locked. I'm locked. Raggy. Raggy. <laughs> Damn, I gotta remember that, man. I'll be forgetting about the um I'll be forgetting about those, man. Um, because I have to log in and do all this shit with Streamlabs and shit. Okay, uh going to my recent events to see um if I have any direct donos. Yes, Q Ball, I see you. Uh with a five says pigeon verse, NDA verse. Uh, I need that war of separation book. Much love to everyone on the panel. Much love to everyone that makes this happen. Hashtag release the Eric sketch. And so then yeah. much, lo much love to the fans then because the fans make this happen. Absolutely. Uh, 100%. Okay, so yeah. You're, I you're have, welcome. I have a bunch ah, that I hey, missed. Thank you, Ask. <laughs> um, okay, so 
Joker the Fool, I missed five days ago with a 50. I appreciate that. Oh, wow. Yeah, my bad on that. But two hours ago, we have a, a NDA bass player. Like, that's <laughs> usually it's HTK bass player. Now his name is NDA, NDA bass player. Come on, <laughs> <laughs> uh, NDA bass player with a five says, got some uh, Riververse scoop. If you ever make some meal, a uh, handyman joins. Uh, my insider is Jay. Of course, Jay wants handyman in the Riververse. In all seriousness, congratulations to you, Chuck, and the Riververse team on another million dollar campaign. Your friend, HTK bass player, a NDA bass player. I appreciate you. And there's uh Kara throwing on the Riververse. Oh, yeah. Hey, there. Y'all um, check out that merch uh, gear video that's that uh sports Kara sporting yeah. a lot of our gear. Done, Kara. Yeah. Right. She, looks she looks great, isn't it? Professional what? model over here. I'm yes. just saying, but t-shirt, <laughs> t-shirt with the Alpha Core logo on, just big ass Alpha Core logo just on the big t-shirt. ass Alpha Core logo, right, okay. right on the or... chest. Right. Yeah, yeah, you've been you asking it. about Alpha Core hoodies. Is if what if I you want to flip it, you can, and you just want to rock the Rip Reverse comics in the front, you can do that hey. as well. Uh, it can be purposed that way. So, uh, big shout out to Kara for grabbing it. That is now available um, right now on the website. So go. You have to understand, out. chat. Kara is only two foot one. <laughs> that, it, it's I'd a, it's a regular that, size beanie. I, I She's just better. really small. Andrew knows they'll get hit. <laughs> yeah. Listen, true. true. There are very true. few people I'm terrified in this world. Two of them are on this chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then Aaron I Caro. <laughs> I did Not miss to be this. Where was this? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, hold on, hold on. I saw a big ass dono. I'm just trying to figure out where it was. Yeah, it's right there. This cocky son of a bitch, Willie Will, with no message, with three hundred dollars. Oh, uh, yeah. No fucking man. I'm so glad someone brought up the direct donos because holy shit, this cocky son of a bitch, Willie Will. There's no. That's why I'm calling him cocky because there's no fucking message there. Uh, damn. He didn't say shit. He just dropped three like three hundred dollars. Uh, you want to talk about fucking swinging double doors? Uh, them swinging shit. Swinging. Uh, them shit. Those doors are off the hinges. Yeah, they're off the hinges. Yeah, they're not there anymore. He kicked them shits off the hinges for three hundred dollars. Uh, again, Willie Will, he's a top top dollar don't know guy, and I appreciate you, man, so much. So appreciate that three hundred. Sorry, I missed that two hours ago. I'm so glad. Shout out Q Ball for bringing that up. I got to get in the habit of when I'm on stream. I don't miss it if I'm streaming like in the office, but if I'm streaming here or in the studio, if I'm streaming in the office, I'll often uh, not be signed in because I'm streaming from StreamYard. So uh, my bad. My apologies. Uh, glad we can get that to you, though. Get that uh, 300. That's that ain't cheap, huge. Man. Shout out to you. Yeah, that's a lot of money, bro. OK, uh, let's. Uh, let me fly through these. Uh, damn, we're already two hours and 45 fucking minutes into this goddamn stream. Holy shit. Another okay. fast one, huh? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, another. <laughs> hey, I'm going to just be two hours and then fucking that turns into. I would do a short stream, probably like hour, hour and a half. Hour and a half, yeah. Gives us five minutes notice. <laughs> you know, winds up being three and a half hours. That shit, man. Um, the, Mar the Marvels equals as in Yara Booty Short says the Ventures R&B fan. Um. So I'm guessing, yeah. Yeah, man, it it tank, tank horribly. Figure <laughs> 8 with a 2 says, does, Yara, uh, does Yara's head ban Boomerang? You'll learn a lot more about it. Trust me, I'm not a, I'm in the aid, bro. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. The big guy uh, with a 5 says, Riververse stickers, I uh, logos, characters, and names, create a book, then I can put them on my property. So like a sticker book. Okay, see, that I've never right. considered. Um, hmm. I'd have to see how that can be produced. I, that I have not. We considered this absolute stickers. Um, just a matter of uh, distributing those. Okay, interesting. CJ with a five says, okay, obviously we need Shad and the Saskas on a team together for weapon demo stream. Uh, yeah, he, he would probably have a blast at that uh, mm. for sure. Uh, our Brown is with a five. Is in Mortal Kombat, Jen and him? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Uh, um, our Browns with a five says, Too bad Ripper uh didn't have side to open the box like uh Saskas, like the Saskas. Uh, I'll mail you some, yeah. We'll yeah. send you some martial arts <laughs> weapons, boss. There you go, I'll take it, I'll fucking take it. Uh, fearless leader with a 10 says, Ripper, how will you or the Saskas go about making a hero with animal control powers competent or even badass? I have to ponder on that. Um, 
So you sound like a vixen, but not vixen. I'd have to ponder on that. Um, I guess it all depends on like the the extent that we're talking about when it yeah. comes to animal control powers, right? Because there, there's it's on a spectrum. You got vixen, where like she still retains how she normally looks. Yeah. There's a badass female character that people underappreciate. True. But then you also have the other end where it's Beast Boy who actually turns into the physical yeah, animal, right? So there's there's it's on kind of a spectrum there. Yeah, that's true. Good and way. not many characters have actually really done that. At least not done it well. Animal man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, if I did it, I think I'd do a skinwalker because they're inherently Ooh. terrifying and uh they wear skins and they're known as witches as well. So Probably yep. something that's kind of a lore that nobody really understands. You'd make it a horror? So is that yeah, a horror would, pitch? Would, is that a horror pitch I'm hearing? That sounds so weird guys, for you. Guys, I'm guys. In a new direction. <laughs> <laughs> They're branching out into new territories. Yeah, we want to expand. <laughs> We're going to scare people. But don't worry, there would be a chick and she would be lame and gay. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, thank God. Fucking perfect. Uh, I know where the money's at. I know yeah, where the money's that's, at. That's where it's we at. write that character. People love it. We just write it well. They're like, yeah. I love this lame, lesbian. lame and gay He's character. My favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is fucking the best. She would be. <laughs> uh, we have uh, Satoshi Perry with a two. Says hello, Ripper Romano. No, Carol. She she got it for me. I see it. I'm just uh, waiting for the work week to to actually get to it. But she did. She did get it for me. Uh, so we have it. We're Carol's good to go. The best. Uh, Brent with a five says return on investment for ads on X. My boy, looking at it, yeah, that's another one, man. Like, those impressions, what do those actually mean? Like, it's oh, and when you start talking about social media ads, man, that just gets weird, man. Um, the conversion percentage is very low, yeah, yeah, you know? the, yeah the conversion incentive is very low. So, that's the thing, man. That's like, it's uh, I don't want to advertise for advertising sake, it, it, yeah, but to your point, Brent, it may be worth. At least entertaining. We'll see. We uh, the big guy, <laughs> yeah, uh, the big guy with the five says, "I want to buy space in my local comic book store. Then put a special Riververse rack with display and books. Who do I talk to about making it happen? Uh, you, you uh, talk to uh, your local comic shop. But we also have a retailer portal. They can talk to us directly um, if they go to slash retailer and they will be able to fill out that form and get get them some books at the retailer's rates." Um, you guys have local comic book shops, wherever you are at, you can do that. Um, Larson with a five says, it's not wrong that I'm only here for the Saskas, right? Hell no. Nah, no, so. Uh, not, that ain't a problem. Hello, I'm only uh, here for the Saskas. This yeah. guy only pays my checks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, 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 it ain't, it, it's not a big deal at all. Uh, it says, oh. uh, I have kid. Um, can't wait for Yaira. Hashtag, we will win. Hell yeah. We already are. That's, yeah, Thank you. That. Shout out, Thanks, Mom. <laughs> I, I asked her. I, I, didn't, I didn't know she did it. <laughs> uh, Trace XL with a five. So here's an idea, River. Staff modeling uh, the merch on your website. Be they so inclined. That would be cool. They have. We do. Uh, go yeah, look at the time. Riververse social yeah. media. Yeah. You can check out the Riververse. Or you can go to our YouTube. Uh, yeah. We got the hoodie video, right? We got all of our. hoodie video. got Carol modeling uh, the. Uh, Doing the Alpha Core merch. Yes. Yeah, blood, we got the blood yeah, we got yeah. the blood roof stuff. Yeah, go to Ripperverse um YouTube and you'll see all those videos of our actual team modeling. Um, I even make people sign a and, waiver to model the clothes. So unless he's referring specifically to like how a lot of apparel uh websites will do like oh like you know, have her actually image, photos like, well, yeah I, get, I got you now that people wearing yeah, it so they, they can see in real time rather than looking, uh, going, like a going to a separate link going to the mm, youtube and okay. whatnot maybe, maybe actually that's, having maybe, that on there okay see that, that i didn't idea. think about maybe Not that's that something idea. that we uh we we get with brian on and maybe we we do a little shoot mm -hmm. and then we replace those with one by ones of us uh in them you know, so they can see the shirt. Like, oh, actually that sounds like a lot yeah. of work for Brian to do. How terrible! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A lot of work for Brian to keep him busy. So yeah, hell yeah. Q ball with a two says, "Don't worry." Partly why I'm here. All right, oh, that's yeah, good. Thank yeah, you. Ball. Uh, so animal control, as in controlling animals like Aquaman or Ant Man, says fearless leader. Okay, that's. I'd have to ponder on how I would, how I would exactly handle something like that. I would have to fearless leader. Um, actually, like the, the guy and uh, what's his name in My Hero who talks to the animals? 
Oh, oh shoot. Um, that guy. I want to go like He's full so Beastmaster. Got to go full Beastmaster and be born from a cow. <laughs> Just Is go that... Animorphs, man. Like, what? why half ass? Full, full Animorph. <laughs> yeah. I I'm game. Fucking, uh, fucking you're gonna bad. be okay. Yeah. Power, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to work out the logistics. So okay, so like okay, the quick, quick summary is: uh, witch took baby from queen, put into cow, took cow out to field. Cow gave birth to baby that now can speak to animals. How? I think you broke him. The cow, like a nine to five. <laughs> We could all watch it together. It's a classic. It's called Beastmaster. I feel like it was shot in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I direct, direct. But the plot is still better than anything coming out right now. So Az's face was priceless on that. <laughs> oh, man. That was so good. Oh, that was so good. Uh, okay, so I'm refreshing this because... Uh, Okay, so we are at a million twelve thousand. Uh, so thank you all so much. Um, Ninety-seven hundred, uh, closing in on uh, ten thousand. That'll be a big milestone of total purchases. So thank you all so much for the love. There is one limited item that is still left, and that would be cover C. Uh, we're only going to do like five thousand of those or so, so you can still get that. All the CGC copies, as you can see down here, are sold Wee. out. Um, those sold yeah. out recently. So the, your last chance, maybe. And I'm not saying that this is going to happen, so don't count on it if it doesn't. But potentially we will, like, you know, we'll look at our stock as fulfillment. We're on the, you know, we're really getting into it. And we see how many we have left of stock. We got damages, all that stuff we got to deal with. Perhaps there may be a couple that will go on sale, but that's all that it would be. It'd be a handful of them. It wouldn't be that many uh, that will go for sale. So maybe that happens, but just don't count on it is what I'm saying. Uh, but there's still plenty of items that you can get. Of course, as I mentioned before, we got the new Riververse Studios uh, hat and done in the style of our animation. As you can see, you got uh, Ingrid, Braxwell, of course, Brian. You got Blood Ruth down there, Isom. You got Yaira over there, and you got these two new characters in the back. Fire guy. Uh, fire, fire guy, as you guys are calling him. Meth Gary? Meth Gary, yes. Meth yeah. Gary is in the back. <laughs> Meth Gary is in the back. So uh, fire guy and Meth Gary are there. You'll learn more about those. God did see them in the actual uh, trailer there. But, yes, posters. We got the beanies. You got the sweatshirt that, of course, uh, Carol has been Rocking, we got the of course. What's your favorite? Which has, uh, <laughs> of course, everybody's loving that. And I'm gonna turn that into a gym shirt. That's yes. what I'm gonna do. Brian nice. and man, uh, I saw you have there. You got your what's your favorite uh, shirt? It's only twenty two bucks, by the way. You can go check that out. Just plenty of stuff that you guys can still get if you want to revisit the store after you've already got your book. So make sure you go um, check that out if you have not. Um, already let me fly through these. We got a uh, hood, hood jigsaw with a 10 says my uncle got me in the comics and you guys reignited a flame. Hell yeah. I forgot for a while in the swarm that is working life. Thank all of you for the space you have given to comic. Mm. Hood jigsaw. Appreciate you so much. Glad you're having a blast. That's what this Isn't is. Isn't it about. nice to be excited again? I mean, yeah. <laughs> dude, That's what it's about. It's quite cool. It really is. I like it. This is what it's about, man. This is what this is what it's about. I'm loving that you guys are having fun, man. Uh, that, that's you guys are why we do it. So, Brass Monkey with a ten. Uh, I'm guessing that's a sticker. Uh, what kind of dog is that? Uh, appreciate that. That's a puppy. It's, it's a, a good, good dog. dog. All dogs yeah. are good dogs. Mm. <laughs> the, the, the big guy with a five says, "I told my local comic shops uh, about the Riververse. They dropped the ball and never contacted you. I want to take the initiative. I have ideas." Um. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, what they have in their store, that's going to still be, they're going to be the ones that determine it. And we make it easy with our uh, retailer portal to make it happen. Um, so have them contact us. This is, again, that's going to be the best way to make make something uh, happen if you want to see it in the store. Uh, see, Eric and Alex worked really hard to set up something really yes. convenient and good for our, our retailer <laughs> partners. So make yeah. sure, if, I mean, if you guys want more Ripiverse representation, in your uh in your <laughs> local comic book shops get on them about it have yep. them hit us up man 
That's what it's there for. It's, it, we make it really easy for that can do, order directly from that portal. It's really easy. Uh, CJ with a five says, will Director X make your next animation? Oh. Uh, as <laughs> good friends with him and can link you up. Uh, Got a direct uh, line to him. <laughs> uh, probably not happening. Uh, 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 yeah, we... Oh. Is, is Director X actually Canadian or did they shoot? Yes. He's, oh, yeah. half, he's half Swiss, isn't he? Canadian half Swiss. Okay. Okay, so he is Canadian. Well, I, I half Swiss, to... half Canadian, half twat waffle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just all the flavors. Uh, yeah. uh, Gary Buki with a, with a 10 says, congrats to you all. Uh, just got to say about Marvel and Disney alienating your core audience should be the first thing you know not to do. <laughs> Very true. And running a business. You think it's just common sense. It should be. It should but be. as they say, and uh, yet. common sense ain't so common. <laughs> And, and yeah. yet here we are. Yes, uh, <laughs> and, and yet here we are. My man's Brian uh, with a two months says, I raised a toast to the Riververse for another million dollar campaign and to my fellow cocky sons of bitches. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you all so much. Okay, so before we bounce up out of here, I do want to uh, make sure everybody gives their kind of closing thoughts about Alpha Core. I'm going to go around the table. Look, I'm obviously a big advocate for this book because I love fucking Chuck Dixon. Uh, it means a lot to me, him being here, be, uh, being able to pick up tips, tricks of the trade, of the business, and everything of writing. And uh, it's just a good good fucking story. Uh, great villains. And it's fucking Chuck Dixon. I know I repeated myself, but I feel like that deserves repeating. That, that's just sell you by it fucking self. Um, right? So um, I appreciate you guys that have pre-ordered it. Watch the animated trailer if you have not already. Go look at, if you need to be convinced, go look at the interiors, read up on the short story, the log line. You, that, that should convince you. And of course, when you guys get a hold of it going into the, uh, well, we'll start fulfillment on the 4th of next month. 4th of December, yeah. So do your reviews. You may get highlighted. Who knows? We did the shot. It's funny. Uh, 32 flavors of Nick Wiser is in the chat. And, you know, he I if you made one of those yeah, review, it, uh, it, recap it, yeah, videos. Yeah, exactly. Like he uh, made it to one of My our brother. videos. So big shout out um, to him. He's been a big advocate for us as well. So go do your reviews, talk about it, give your feelings, all that good stuff. Um, I, I, again, I just can't wait for you guys uh, to get a hold of this book. Avery Parker also says, um, says uh, the Riververse family has the best clan leaders, company heads uh, in the world, and they ain't even bloody close. Well, we got the best fans, and it ain't even close. Stop. It says, stay being great. We'll keep winning. Well, I appreciate you. Okay, closing thoughts, Andrew. I'm going around the table, man. You got anything you want to say to people? Go pre-order Alpha Core. If you are a longtime comic book fan, then you know Chuck Dixon's name, and you know the quality that is attached and intrinsic to that name. And this book reads and feels like a Chuck Dixon book and if you're a longtime fan you know what that means that's quality that means you're going to get intrigue you're going to get action you're going to get a blend of all the things that make an awesome classic comic book chuck dixon delivers joe bennett is a freaking beast on Absolutely. the pencils in that book and there's some incredible scenes make sure you get in on it and if you're new to comic books if alpha core is your first book there's no better first book to get in i on. agree and I would encourage you to consider the first appearance pack over on our campaign page, campaign page because that gets you also the first appearance of Alpha Core for a dirt cheap price, like thirty five bucks. That's cheap. Two bro. books. That's two. Like that's almost two hundred pages worth of comics. Yep. Thirty five bucks. Great deal. Absolutely worth the price. Phenomenal writing. Incredible artwork all around. Get on it. This, this is a great time to be a longtime comic book fan <clears throat> and a new fan. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, Vito, we have to. We're already three hours uh, in, man. Um, says, don't leave. <laughs> we're, 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 we're three hours in, man. We, we got to bounce this. I like his energy. Yeah, I, I do. I, I respect it. Don't, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. All right, Carol, any uh, closing thoughts um, before we uh, head on out? Alpha Core is so good. You should buy it twice. And I need you to buy it twice because the more money that we make on it, when I go to have these talks with Eric about, you know, the future that ass merchandise run that I want to do, it makes it easier to do that. So please help me make my dream come true. Please. Thank you. She has uh, pleaded her case uh, there. She wants you to buy 
two of them, perhaps. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, thank you. Uh, lovely Saskas. Uh, any closing thoughts or anything? Yes, I would like to pile on to what Caro just said. Every time you buy something, it gets reinvested in the company. Eric isn't going out on wild vacations and buying my fancy cars my for only, some My only Lamborghini. <laughs> That's the only Ripagini right there you're ever going to see. <laughs> there so, it is. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but we were talking about activewear. We were talking about all this gear we want to have. We were talking about I don't know what, but that stuff's going to happen the more books you buy. And uh, Alpha Core, the super cops of the Ripperverse. There is a very uh, important reason why this comic was released when it was. You've seen them in ISOM. You already know you're going to see them in Yaira. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's a reason Ch this was the one book that Chuck's writing because it is very, very important. Not saying you have to. I mean, you don't have. You can read a book series and be completely lost, but this, this sure would be fucking awesome for you to pick up. There you go. Uh guys, thank you for being here. I love you, the fans. I might have never met you, and if you haven't met me, we're huggers. Yeah. So we will hug every one of you many, many times. I can't wait for the ri first Ripicon. I can't wait for the Yaira body pillows. Yeah. I can't wait to release the Eric sketch. Yeah. I hope it's somewhere safe. Yeah. Because if we release it and you're like, oh, I don't know where I put it, I'm gonna, we're gonna riot. I would freak out. I'd uh -oh. run down to insane. Texas. That's gonna be the equivalent of if Cena wins, we riot. <laughs> 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 I will say that if you have ever read a comic book or even if you've never read a comic book, Chuck is a master. Like yeah. this is like getting an Alex Ross poster of Yaira, Ooh. which is coming one day. One oh man, I want to make, we'll make, yeah. make it happen. I want to make it happen. We'll make it happen. It's just a masterpiece. And uh there is a thing that happens in it that just took my breath away. All of it yeah. was great, but there is a moment <laughs> I did not see coming. And it was one of those moments where I, I, I was emotionally invested. And I was like, man, this is book one. Yeah. This is the thing that happened book one. And I'm now, now I'm, now I'm emotionally compromised. I'm, I'm in it. And I want you guys to be in it because there will be a Saska sister spoiler talk coming yeah. eventually Ooh. for yes. Alpha Core. Yep, that'll happen. That'll happen. So appreciate y'all, of course, uh, hanging out with us uh, today. That's been awesome. Um, Thanks for having us. This oh, is so wicked. Of course, I'm, I'm glad yeah, y'all yeah. take the time out. Stanley, Stanley Lau cover would be nice. Oh, yeah. Stanley Lau oh, yes. yeah. I would love it. I would fucking love it. Let's make that it happen. Um, Kara. Um. Let's see. So we are going to be locking down the address update soon. Um, the fulfillment is going to be starting early December. Team's going to start prepping shipment soon. So let's go ahead. If you have an order in, just go ahead, log into your account, make sure that your address is correct. And if it's <laughs> not, you need to have a ticket submitted to the help desk uh, tomorrow before noon central. Uh, it would make me uh, very happy if you did that and you didn't wait until your order has already shipped to realize <laughs> that your order or that your address is wrong because it makes my life stressful and your life stressful. And we want to make sure you get your stuff yep. like this awesome sweatshirt or this beautiful beanie. You need it. Um, but yes, it's a it's a win win. Just just take a couple minutes. If you don't have an account, go check your email confirmation that you got. Do that, please. Please, please, please. But yes, I'm excited for Alpha Core. It was a pleasure getting to hang out with everybody oh, yeah. at the uh, the Ripa HQ last week. It was so fun. Uh, I uh, I love seeing everybody. And uh, if you guys are, if anybody's going to LA Comic Con, I will be there. Um, so make sure to to rock some some Ripperverse merch. Oh, please. If you got it. Take pictures oh, yeah. with Kara in your Ripperverse gear if you really like yeah. Yes. 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 There you go. And remember, and of course, if you are a Ripperverse member. Oh, shit. And you make your order by the 4th, get your order by Christmas. Yes, we, we are guaranteeing yes. those. So if be it's sure. domestic. Yes, that's domestic. That absolutely is domestic. Um, All of our members, we did send that. Of course, out if you make you if you ordered and you are a member, we got you set up. So uh we got those flagged. We'll be those will be the first orders, of course, out the door. 
um so ultra member ultra yeah. ultra max you wow yes the a lot of people have asked about that yes the isom one creator edition cover that andrew has in his hand is still available for all it ultra is. Max. it is we still have those you still can redeem those um so be sure to become an ultra mac if you want it comes with it you're not purchasing it again like it comes with your membership if you are ultra ultra mac on the uh Riververse memberships uh w- website so be sure to go check that out that creators edition you got my man santuan you got um uh isom as well kind of going at it so be sure to uh check that out if you have not um already so uh okay uh and lastly of course my co-host, the Silverback Man. Uh, what's going on? Um, look, chat, honest, straight, just complete and utterly straight with you. This, I don't have no deal here, you know. Uh, I'm I'm here because I'm a, a comic fan. Yeah, I'm a friend. I'm friends with Eric. Yeah, we do a show together. But uh, everything that I'm wearing, everything that I've purchased, uh, well, everything Isom, I, everything from the Ripperverse, I purchased my own money. You know, no freebies, no gratuities, nothing like that. Um, I don't know what's coming. I don't want to know what's coming. I want to experience it in real time. I want to experience it as it, as it happens when our books drop. And that's that's the aspect of being a comic book fan. This is this is you know, I've, I've, to, I've welcome. I actually told Eric Shush once. It was like we're, yeah. I was like no no don't tell me yeah 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 no I, I don't want to know yeah you know because because I want to I want to I want to experience it just the same. I, you know I'm a, I'm a huge comic fan, and uh, it, it's just. It is so exciting to be excited uh, for the first time in, in, in such a long time. And the reason why I'm here and, and the reason why I'm always, you know, on social or whatever, pushing Eric and, and, and bigging him up is because I, I legitimately believe in it, just like the people who have been supporting Ison 1, Ison 2, Alpha Core, seven figures, all three, just like all of you. Uh, it, it's something that we we can believe in it. Something somebody's actually taken the initiative and, and doing something great. And I've never had any doubts about Alpha Core in the slightest because Chuck Dixon. I, I know the guy. I've read his work for decades. He's absolutely unreal. I know we're going to get such uh, a quality product to read. I'm just waiting for my shipping notice email. That's <laughs> what I'm waiting for. That's it. And then I can get stuck into it and tell you my favorite part of a book I'm not going to read. <laughs> <laughs> and then, it's, it, but it's it's more than that. You know, it's it's not just that. I'm on the panel here with the Soska sisters, the Soska sisters and ourselves. We, we've been DMing back and forth, just regular conversation. And uh, because of Eric's excitement about No Restraints Play, their Black Widow five uh, five issue, um, I, I I was conversing with them, so I, I got an idea of what they were like as people, and uh, they were they were great people. And then I thought I got to do my research. I got to read this book. I got to see what their actual, you know, products like, what they are, what they're like as artists. And then re- reading No Restraints Play was just a breath of fresh air. It really was. I couldn't put it down. Like I said, I wanted to read an issue every, every day leading up until the real BBC on Tuesday, because they're going to be our guests on Tuesday on Nerd Roddick's channel. And I couldn't put it down, legitimately could not put it down. It was, it was so well written. It was so engrossing. Um, I, and I was just loving it. I couldn't stop. I, and I needed, I needed to read it all. So even after Alpha Calls dropped, even after Chuck Dixon is no doubt going to deliver, there's no doubt that is going to happen. We've got, we've got legit coming. It's legit. And uh, and I'm so excited for Yaira. I'm so I'm so excited for what what's going to come in the future. And, and somebody who has put you know, at the beginning of the stream before he started streaming, Andrew said, "If Ripper was a betting man, I was thinking to myself, the guy, hello, <laughs> hello, <laughs> you know the, what do you think the Ripper versus man? You know, yeah. this is a guy that that put his money where his mouth is. He took the biggest gamble in 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 history, and and he won." And uh, and and that kind of that kind of balls that kind of vision is is intoxicating. It really is. It's absolutely yeah. intoxicating. And I think I legitimately think we feel the same as 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 comic book fans. Uh, we we feel it. We know that there's something special going on. It is it is palpable. It's tangible almost. 
and uh, we want to be part of it and and that is fandom you know that is that is uh why we're into the franchises that we're in and now we've got a brand new one a brand new one that is just starting now to to spread its wings into into different characters in this world and and start to put some pieces together and learn some things the reason why i said to to eric about ice and one and the small in the exchange between ice and yaira and the alpha core is because that's what i needed i just needed a taste mm -hmm. i just needed a taste and then i need the the writers whether it be the soska sisters chuck dixon mike barron whoever it's going to be then i need them to take the wheel and take the reins and tell me stuff show me stuff maybe not everything we can't have everything at once. You've got to be teased, and and let them let these creatives put their vision out there. And and having read the Soska sisters now, having you know just a, such a steep history with with Chuck, um, it's 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 going to be a crazy ride. And uh, I think you need to be part of it, and I think you want to be part of it. And and God bless. And yeah, yeah. just one tiny little thing. It's it. Not only is it great to see this from a creative perspective. Uh, seeing the Soskas, Chuck, Mike coming in, Eric's going to learn so much from these people. It's unreal, absolutely. Which is only going to make him better. Yep. Um, but to see the, the the staff members, to see the way that they uh, in, uh, interact with people online, to see uh, how much fun they seem to be having, how much enjoyment they seem to be having, um, is in itself infectious and shows the kind of environment that they're working in uh the hard work that they're putting in and uh and it's it, you know to see that somebody who's who's create these jobs for these good people man i don't i don't think we could be asking for anything more than than what we're getting right now and uh to to for eric to be the biggest thing in comics and it's not even no. fucking close <laughs> And it's all word of mouth, which means it's all you, you know, is is uh, the best advertisement there could ever be. So um, be honest with him. Put your opinions forward Absolutely. to him. Yeah. Tell him what you like. Tell him what you don't like. Absolutely. Think he's got an ear to listen. And uh, let's fucking go. Hell yeah. Back that ass up. Damn right. <laughs> let's fucking Woo! go. Big shout out to Az, man. Kind words, man. Um, so before I read these last two super chats, so wait a minute. Two, so Tuesday, Real BBC, whose channel is it on? Is it on? Uh, it's gonna Real BBC is gonna be on Gary's channel this Gary, week, and the Soskas will be joining you. Yes, they will. Uh, there, so that's gonna be fun. Y'all yeah, be on the lookout for that. It'll be this week, um, Wednesday. Uh, when, uh, see, Wednesday's us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Wednesday we got us. Um, on uh, River Silverback, I think it's on his channel. Um, if I'm not mistaken, yes, yeah, so, yeah, that, that'll be on Az's channel. Um, so yeah, be ready for that if you have not. Uh, trust me, we are, we put on a good show. Uh, so be <laughs> yeah. uh, go go check that out. Um, as far as this upcoming week for, for myself, I'll be streaming at random times. I got some got some cool things that I'm working on. Uh, we've got some cool meetings that we'll be having uh, behind the scenes that are NDA'd. Uh, and yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun week, but seriously, guys, I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, it's been a crazy successful campaign. Less than two weeks. We hit a million uh, and it's still rising. We're already at a million and uh, 12,000. So appreciate that as the numbers keep going uh, up. Uh, let me fly through these. We have uh, Bush and Ryu Cat says, Eric, make a character for ass flying mouse man. Uh, he says, uh, this is Bush and Ryu Cat. So, <laughs> Jigs, I would have five. So, all of you have a great product. I admire you sticking to the course. Um, uh, I am eager for you guys' future. I'm eager for you to get Thank you. Yaira, get Alpha Core, I saw him three area. Uh, you got Good Mike. Name. We got fucking, fucking Mike Barron. Mike like, Barron. So you understand, Mike like, Barron. That's happening after after Yaira. Like, so we're going into a massive, we got a massive campaign right there, right now. We got another massive campaign in Yaira. Then right after that, we got fucking Mike Barron's gooding. It's gonna be insane, man. But uh, you know, obviously it can't happen without you all. So um it, it, to everybody's point here, everything gets reinvested. 
that's the stage that we're in so we you want to see more things more merchandise more books uh other animation other cool stuff that you want us to do don't hesitate to go to the store, campaign pages that are active, whatever it may be. We appreciate each and every one of you. But we've been live for this celebration for well over fucking three hours. So, uh, we got to bounce. So we appreciate you guys so much. Um, I don't know if I'm streaming tomorrow. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what happens. Let's just say that. But I got to go. Until next time, man, y'all be easy. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you so much.